Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Firefighters Podcast, where we seek to develop, inspire, and motivate the world of the emergency services operator through a series of wide-ranging conversations. Now, before we go any further, just hit that rate, follow, or subscribe button on whatever platform you're listening to. It's a key performance indicator for us and helps us reach even more people. Now, here's what we've got for you today. Hey folks, and welcome back to the podcast. Today is a very special episode, as our host today is a very, very, very good friend of mine. It is the wonderful, the articulate, the emotionally intelligent, the brilliant, the powerhouse that is Sarah Bromley. And she's going to be interviewing me. So this is a podcast that we have had requested quite a bit is for someone to come and interview me. A kind of jujitsu, judo flip, turning the tables. And who better to do it than Sarah? Sarah is one of my best friends. I'm head of heels in love with her. She's fantastic watch commander here in the UK. She's very brilliant. She's uh, far better than me in many ways. She's got great values. She's an incredible team player. She's a great leader. She's a fantastic communicator. And she's also got a really big understanding muscle and uh, level of empathy and patience, as will be evident in our conversation today, because she's one of the very few people in my world that's been able to tolerate me for a very long period of time. Because she's really great. Uh, She loves what we do here on the podcast and she's a huge part of the team as are a few other members but Sarah has certainly been with us the longest and contributes a massive amount to the success of what we're able to do every day and every week on the podcast. So she's here to interview me and talk about the podcast, talk about what it is, a little bit around my background, why did we start it, how did it manifest, how's it grown to where it is, why did I do it and yeah, maybe understand a little bit more about how it works and how we go about picking people, what we're trying to achieve, and maybe a little bit about my journey into the role that I do now as well. So was a bit of a weird one, bit of a surreal one, something we've been asked to do for a long time, and I have put it off for a long time because it feels beyond egotistical and self-involved to have someone come on and interview me about me because it's not about me, it's always about the guest, it's always about the sector, it's all about bringing great people, great stories, great knowledge, great information to the wider sector as a legacy resource. So flipping those tables and just making it about me was a bit weird, but I was up for doing it. Uh, We're dropping it in the middle of the week, so as not to take up any of our guest slots, which always go out on a Monday. But for those that wanted it, hopefully you enjoy it. For those that just feel this is a massive ego massage, please skip on by. We'll be back to regular programming again very soon. But yeah, if you like it, if you have any more questions, if you want to see something like this in the future, Sarah's going to be coming back on again. I always love interviewing Sarah. She's a very knowledgeable young lady. And if you want more of this, we'll do some more of this. But for now, this is what I've done. Hope you enjoy it. And as always, me and Sarah will see you on the other side. You got your phone? Nope. You haven't got your phone? How's your know what the notes are? Because I'm brilliant. Really? No. You are brilliant. No, I am brilliant, but I don't want to, didn't want to look at them anyway. I had a quick look at them. I realised this when I was watching a podcast recently. So Chris Williamson, Modern Wisdom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the audacity is that he will just sit there and read off his tablet. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, he has, he has the fucking iPad on. He the- just has it right in front of him yeah. and he's just reading it. Nice. And you're like, the audacity of it. But yeah. see, the beautiful truth is, there is no original thought anymore. No. Mm. We are all... Most of what he regurgitates on that podcast is other people's... It's all, it's all other people's stuff. All none of it is, is this is what I'm saying. There's no, there's no original thought. And what I mean, we, none of us are having original yeah. thoughts. We're just having our own tilt mm. on something we've heard before or something we learnt from someone. Because that's all you are. You're just a collection of your experiences yeah. and your thoughts and people that you've engaged with. How great is the word audacity, by the way? You don't hear that enough. No, you don't. <laughs> I say that sometimes. So like, and they add the audacity to speak to me like that and I just go, can we just pause for a second on that word? <laughs> it's a podcasting thing. I'm like, that would be good on the, podcast. the limits of your language. The, uh, the limits <laughs> of your language are the limits of your world. Mm. So if you've only got one way to say it, then your world's going to shrink drastically. Yeah. Because often most offensive things, it's like, it's not what you said, it's how you said it. Learn to 100%. say it better. 
learn to say it differently. If you said it and it offended me, how differently can you say it? Be, well, so like people can I just said it, it's your problem if you don't. No, it's not my problem. It's our problem yeah. because we're here in a conversation or we're here as a stru- an instructor and a student. I need to have more than one way to say it. Yeah, well, 100%, yeah, because people have different learning styles. You could Try and not, get that in front of you. If you you could not say pull it that I'm passive aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you can do that. You got to run him on the way. Cheers, brother. Um, but no, I always think about that. So we're just going to roll and start because we'll just use it from wherever. Yeah, yeah. I always think about that with students. You know, like when you're talking about knots and lines as a really basic one. It's like, if you only know one way to tie the knot, you're not going to be a great instructor. You'll be a great firefighter because you only need to know it for you. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But when it comes to teaching somebody else and the student goes, oh, actually, I'm left-handed, Sarah. And, and then go, I go, well, I yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a you problem then, yeah. isn't it? And it's like, no, no, a great instructor will have seven different ways. Yeah. And to they tie just that need knot. to be able to adapt to that one. And then they can take that and run with that. Yeah. Because yeah. also you want the outcome, don't you? You want people to go, all I need you to do is tie the knot. How you get to the yeah, destination, exactly, yeah. if you want to stick it up your ass and out your ear, do a double backflip, just get the result. Yeah. There's so many people, like when sometimes you see instructors and they're, they're starting to do it and then they'll stop them. And I'm like, just let them go. Yeah, because you don't know where they're going to end up with it. They might get it. And then afterwards you can go, you got it. You know, the bit you did at the middle was you didn't need to do that yeah. because you, it's like if my daughter took a shoe off the left foot, put it on the right foot, then put it back on the left foot to tie it. I'm like, yeah, you tied your shoe. Great. Yeah. You There's can do that for the rest of your life. It. Yes. It's going to take you longer than you need to because you don't have to actually switch feet halfway through. Yeah, and I'm trying to make it look less, like, yeah. like better for you around your friends when you put well, your shoes on the end of the day. Because if a kid did learn that way and they're like, I always tie them on my left foot though. So what I do is I take my right shoe off first, put it on my left foot to tie it a little bit, then take it off and then tighten it up. If they did it, it would work, wouldn't it? it would and the work. child that arrives in front of you is a child with two shoes that are both yeah, tied. Yeah, it and you're would like, work. who cares? But yeah, like you say, it's where they end up. When um, before you came in, I was talking with Gaz, and we were talking about his son, and uh-huh. we we're talking unconsciously about communication, and he hit the nail right on the head because he has people that message him because him and his wife share these really, really powerful messages and yes. videos about his son and stuff on Instagram. I'm so looking into that, by the way, after this. It's honestly yeah. bloody emotional, yeah. powerful stuff. And you realise it's just raw and that's what's so beautiful about yeah, it. Yeah, and it's just true and honest, yeah. But like, you had uh, someone reach out to him recently and said about uh, our son is or their daughter and he, is my son ever going to speak? You uh-huh. know, and that, the, 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 like, the judo flip that he did on the question because I always think this, even with podcasts, I'm like, ask better questions, you'll get better answers. Mm-hmm. Ask better questions of life, yeah. you'll get better answers. And that person was like, will my child ever speak? And he said to them, do they need to? And like to us, it's like, well, yeah, mm-hmm. because that's the way the world works, Gaz. Yeah, and it's like, well, no. no it's not. Because yeah. he said, they might not be able to speak, but they'll be able to communicate. Yes, well, that is the, the key. And that's it. it. As long as they can communicate... And get out because, like you're saying, oh, if my child's born deaf, is that game of no? Look at all the successful deaf people. Born blind, or look at all the successful blind Uh people. Lose your sight, okay? Learn how to do this. Yeah, you You know, a a child's way to communicate. He was like, you know, he was having this for ages, and then his son just grabbed his hand and pointed at something. He's like, oh, well, that's him communicating. If he just does that for the next seven years, yeah. that's fine. Huh? And we can live a lot and, and he makes a sound or he does this or I read off his facial expressions. He doesn't like this. He doesn't like that. Yeah. Then of course. And then I throw it to, again, people with other learning disabilities, but also like if people have pets or something like that, not the children of pets, but it's like, well, I could give my dog 27 instructions. It'll just fucking smile at me and be like, oh, we're going for a walk or not then, dad. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. He's I don't know what you've going, just said, Dad, but which one? Kai, can you go in the lounge? Your fucking toys are everywhere. Yeah, collect them up, sort your life out, and your bed, the way you left it last night, <laughs> and no thank you, yeah, you haven't finished your breakfast, and then I want you to go upstairs and put Lily's socks back in her room, which you were chewing on the landing last night, yeah, then come back down and we'll go for a walk. Yeah, he don't want to fucking do it, is he? Uh, he's literally heard their walk. Yeah. <laughs> if Kai anything, and walk. If anything. Yeah, he's, yeah. Just, he's just happy I'm yeah, talking course, to him. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's that but he can communicate. Yeah. He tell, he's, he's so hypersensitive more than I... He knows when someone's coming to the door and we don't want them there. He knows when a mood is changing in a room. Mm. If I'm play fighting with Lily, he knows there's something that shouldn't be happening here that he's not quite sure about. He can communicate. Yeah. And again, just to just reiterate, different way. children are dogs. But... The analogy still works. So no one writing about it, okay? Yeah. <laughs>
This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Gore-Tex Professional Fabrics. Now, we all know the working environment of a firefighter is filled with challenges. We face serious risks on the job, such as heat exhaustion, burns, physical and mental stress, and we frequently come into contact with high levels of toxic chemicals. Now, I have been wearing Gore-Tex for nearly two decades on the front line, working in hostile environments, tackling challenging incidents from firefighting to water incidents and in urban search and rescue environments. Gore-Tex have a well-earned reputation for protecting professionals in the fire and emergency services through their family of highly innovative, waterproof, breathable moisture barriers that exceeds global performance standards and are trusted worldwide. Gore-Tex, going further together. I was going to say over to you, but we're we're in a weird situation today. We are in a weird situation because we're trying to turn in the tables, aren't we? So loads of people over the years have got back to you saying... When is it going to be your turn to sit in the hot seat? Yeah. And then I loved the idea that I could be the one <laughs> being P. Wayfield on the Fire Fast podcast and asking, hey, how are you? And mm-hmm. tell us about yourself. So we've decided we're finally going to do it. Yes. And we're going to talk about you and unpick who is Peter Wakefield and why you are where you are, how did you get where you are, and just have a nice conversation. How is this walking bin fire still alive yeah. and still fumbling his way through life? How is he not sacked? Well, yeah. How, you know, <laughs> and he's gotten close to the wind at times. Um, so, yeah, no, you're right. It is, um, without the ego, up, there's so many incredible people. Mm-hmm. But because, yeah, I've been on the thing so many times because it's our thing. The most requested guest, ironically, is me. Not because I've done anything impressive, not because I know more than anyone else, but just because it probably feels like a constant tease for people, where it's like, oh, there's a little bit of information. Uh, because it's all about complimenting the guest and making that and ha- slowing rapport and all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. But also, you're never really just talking about yourself. Because I always say to people, it's not the bloody Pete Wakefield show. No. It's how I was podcast. You know, mm-hmm. my number one thing is always the guest experience. Yes. I want, and I said to you way back when when we first started our chat, and I said to every guest, just before we record, and nobody knows this, we always say, look, guest experience is the number one thing. I said, when someone says to you, and they say, Sarah, uh, you know, they hear the podcast in a month's time when it comes out, or three years, or five years time, and they go, I heard you on the podcast, Sarah. I I want your immediate feeling to be proud. You're like, yeah. yeah, I had a really great chat with Pete. It was a very positive experience. Yes. And I'm not embarrassed that you've heard it. Yeah. I don't want you to feel like, oh God, that was real. Fucking, that was a real, I, I really hate that. I like, um, hate that it's still out there. I wanted to ask him to take it down. And the LinkedIn, the Instagram, whatever, whatever, all the letters and letters, fucking who writes letters, all the messages and emails <laughs> that we receive. It's so nice to get the positive feedback and we share yes. some of them with the guests, but you're right we never I never talk about me because it's always it's about them and that's the way it should be I'm trying to throw them softballs to knock out the park never embarrass anyone never let never. anyone commit professional suicide absolutely but yeah it's, it's it's never about me as such no but like you say it's like anything isn't it when there's anyone hosting anything you want to know about them as well mm. like what's behind there like what's his yeah. story because you are delving into other people's life stories experiences the good the bad the ugly and i guess people are like oh but what's your story and yeah. i suppose that is why because the intrigue is there of like we see him we know who he is like we'll go to events and people yeah. are like oh that's pete that's pete that's pete and they just want to know i think it's that inquisitiveness of us all that tell us a bit more about yourself and that's yeah. okay, that's it yeah, no, and I get that, and I appreciate it. So I know we kind of spoke about this a little bit before, things that you want to ask me, things that I would love to talk about mm. and do a little like tap dance on, if you will, or just of things that sometimes you wish the guest would have brought up. Yes. And we're not okay, going to speak yeah. about any specific guests here, but just things where I'm just trying to strike that balance of not interrupting, and I do interrupt too much. And for listeners, this is a thing I'm constantly working on. It's that thing where I'm the excited child and I'm like, oh my God, Sarah's just said something amazing. It is your Listen, thing though, like, and that's fine. <laughs> oh, it is, but it's not always appropriate. And I am trying to tell you that. Better. But there's things sometimes you, where you wish the conversation would have gone. Yes, of course. Because there's something you want to talk about there. But again, like I always say, it's, it's, it's for them and we go where they want to go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so there's a bunch of little bits that we've got some notes about um, that we'll talk about today. Cool. So what do you want to start with? Who is Pete? So I know, let's start with like... Fire service, obviously, you are in the fire service. Yep. You are currently a watch commander. Yep. So when was when did your fire service career start and why? Why the fire service? So my fire service career started when, just before my 18th birthday, 
it was when I applied for the thing to go and do the thing. I was originally with an on-call, so a retain station. And I wanted to do it because there was a bloke that lives up the road from my parents. And his name is Paul Saxby. And he is a really impressive man. Very, very stoic. A better man than me. Very strong values. Will do the right thing irrespective of personal or professional cost. And that's kind of a nice thing about the on-call and retained as well. Sometimes they don't get stuck in the quagmire of policies and polit politics and all that sort of stuff. It can go the other way in the wrong way, where people have little empires and they don't obey the rules and they are horrible to their teams. But this man was a watch manager at that station and he's someone I very much look up to. Um, but I didn't know anything about him when I was very young. He was just a guy that was there, uh, lived up, up the road and I would walk past him with a dog. I'd ride past him on my bike. Me and my friends would play up and down the road and all this sort of stuff. But every now and again... He'd sprint out of his house, jump in the car and go screaming down the road. And you're like, what the hell? You know what I mean? I just thought he was, I don't know, I don't know I thought I family issues or yeah. you don't know when you're a kid. You just yeah. go, that, that guy, guy drives like a maniac. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, what is he doing? Yeah. Um, and actually there's a, uh, have you uh, seen the Firefighters Charity have got a book about the wolves in the, the wolf in the night? I have seen that book there's a poster up at work. I don't think I've read it, but... Uh... So the way that story works is the child uh, hears wolves in the night and is petrified because every time they hear the wolves howling, dad or mum sprints out the house and when they come back, sometimes they've got bruises, cuts, sometimes they smell a bit mm -hmm. and they're really tired and sometimes they're quiet uh -huh. and sometimes they're upset. Um, but it always happens when these wolves are howling in the night. That's a great book, isn't it? You can think about it already. You're like, oh my God, I see this again. Um, and as the kid gets older and older and they start to ask questions about it, sometimes the parent wants to talk about it, sometimes the parent doesn't want to talk yeah. about it. But then one day, the child goes to meet their parent and the parent is with the wolf pack and they see the wolf pack and their big, small man, woman and the wolf pack is the watch uh -huh. and it's all of their friends. And the howling is obviously the alert are going off yeah. and the sirens in the night and they go and they go and do stuff. And sometimes the stuff goes well. Sometimes the stuff doesn't go well. Yeah. Sometimes they do get hurt and hopefully they never die. And sometimes they come back smelling. Sometimes they come back a little bit struggling with what they've just experienced. And it was the assumption that they go in this horrible place and these people are hurting them. They're going to fight the wolves. Mm. But it's like, no, we're going to do a thing that needs to be done. Someone needs to do it. And it doesn't always go the way you want it to go. Yeah. You turn up into chaos, try and create peace and calm at the end of it. And eventually it does get resolved, but the resolution is outside of your sphere of control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was what I thought when I read that book and connected the dots looking yeah, backwards. Yeah. When I was like, this guy's racing off, what's this guy racing off to? And then when I was old enough and confident enough, and like I think it was one day when my friend, I'd, I'd cycle back to their house and I was just pushing my bike back on my phone. And uh, he was out working on his car. And... Uh, I was chatting to him and uh, I was confident enough to chat with him by then because I'd seen him a lot and he's a great guy. And he was sort of like, all right, Pete. I was like, hey, you know, Paul, uh, what are you doing to your car? He's like, oh, you know, got to do this, got to do that. He says, I do uh, I do rag it a lot, you know. And I was like, yeah, I saw, I see you sometimes. Yeah. Like, sometimes like, it's like you're a Formula One driver, you know, you like drive really fast. And he's like, well, you know, get to the station, brother, you know. And I'm like, what? like the police station and he's like no fire station you know I'm I'm a firefighter and I was like whoa mm. he, didn't, he didn't say fire man and I and this is the thing like we're talking about at WFS over the weekend uh -huh. I was talking with Kev who won like the ambassador award or okay. won the um, advocate award I forget what it's called um, and he was talking about when he meets new recruits and some of them go I've always wanted to be a fireman and he goes a firefighter you know yes. and he's always bang from day one let's correct that yeah, because yeah. you're not even in the job yet and you're saying fireman? What the f no one said, we haven't been fireman for 50 years. Yeah. Why are you saying, for, probably four years, but why are you saying fireman? You know, but I always say to people, say firefighter because it sounds cooler. Just that, yeah, yeah. Like, what do you do? I fight fire. Yeah? Yeah. That's a cool job. Uh -huh. you're, a, what, you're a police officer. I'm a paramedic. Okay. Mm -hmm. Firefighter. Mm. That's what you do. I almost feel like it must have been a meeting and it never happened, of course, but like, I imagine a meeting where everyone turned up, the firefighter turned up late, obviously, but at that point they were just like, you're the person that's going to deal with bad stuff and fires and things. So everyone think of what you want to be called and then come to the meeting ready and we're going to kick it off. <laughs> Police officer turned up and they go, oh. so we decided we're going to enforce the law. 
we're going to be officers of the law. We're going to be police officers. And they go, oh, fucking yeah, right, okay, cool, that's cool. Write that down. Good one, Jesus. And the firefighter's thinking, I haven't fucking thought about anything, to be honest. Yeah. Okay, and they go, oh, no, let, let them go next. I'll go last. I'm still yeah, I'll thinking. go last. <laughs> <laughs> and they go, we're... Uh, yeah, we help people. We're, you know, we're going to help everyone in the in the whole country. If they get sick, we're going to be a national, we're going to be a hash, national health service. We're going to save everyone. You know, we're going to make them well. And we're going to have our, you know, we're going to have our ambulance staff and all this. And they're like, oh yeah, good, write that down. National health service, or kind of like that. Come around to us and like, what have you decided on? I mean, like we're like, um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna go in and and uh, the fire. When we see the fire, we we're, we're gonna fight it. So we're gonna just, just, I mean, write down firefighter for now, and then we'll we'll probably come up with something better. And that was just it. Uh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, that's it. We're firefighters. Um, so, yeah, I learned that he did that thing, and then I was I was 16, and I was going out in town, getting up to mischief, um, doing things I shouldn't be doing. There's an old scrapyards near us, and an old train line near us, and smashing cars, and <laughs> setting fires, and all this sort of stuff. And you'd see him turn up. I always think firefighters are arsonists that just bottled it ah. <laughs> or sometimes like the, the flashover films <clears throat> or backdraft films sorry they are genuine arsonists but there is that fascination with the thing as well oh, and absolutely. I know it's more than just fires but you know what I mean it's mm. like so anyway as I was exploring around I would see him go to stuff and I'd be at the park come do water training water rescue and I suppose I became a bit of a geek with it you know I started to know what the call signs were I knew which fire engine it was I could see the person in front. I'd probably know who it was in charge because I'd yeah. learned the name. And I'd ride past the fire station. And I'd stand at the edge of the drill ground behind the cones and I'd watch the drills nice, yeah. and I'd try and listen to the words and try and predict what's going to happen next. Oh, they've done this. Now there's someone's going to climb up the ladder. They're going to go aloft and then, oh, are they going to use the, the big hose or the small hose today? You know, and I didn't know the words for anything back then. And I just was interested in it. Yeah, yeah. I was really interested in it. Um, so when I was 17, I was learning, you could do that. And I was going, I was like into the station then on drill nights. If I wanted to, like at the end, you'd bring some biscuits and just like, what did people want? Or if you could just pop to the shop and get them some milk, if they needed some milk, I was that loser, you know, I was a fucking loser. Um, but I would do that and they would reward you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They would, I'd be like, oh, cause I'd see them looking at stuff, studying papers, and so there was books, the old manuals of ironship. Yeah, yeah. And I'd be like, Small red books. would it be okay? Like, could I borrow that? You know, yeah. could I borrow the book? And I got trusted with it, you know, mm. and I would put it in my backpack and ride home and then I'd read the book. Yeah. And I'd be like, this is awesome. Do you know what I mean? And, I, and that's just how it kind of manifested. And they yeah. said, if you're obviously really interested in it, if you fancy going for it. And I over prepared, like I was super physically fit. Yep. I was, I way over indexed, way, way too prepared. I was the annoying recruit, really annoying recruit, you know, oh, yeah, I know, and everyone else, not trying to make other people like a dick, but I did yeah, have. but it was something that you was passionate about and you'd really put the, that time and I think it was just because it meant so much to you. Yeah. You didn't want to screw it up and you was like, I will be prepared and then some. And that's what, I know we've had conversations in the past where sometimes you're blown away or astonished how little some people prepare for it. Uh huh. Oh yes. And you're like, it's no accusation at them, and it's like, like everyone's on a journey. But I'm like, this isn't the FBI you're applying for, or the CIA. All of this stuff is publicly available. Exactly. Yeah. You just just f fall past a fire station, and someone, I mean, you find people that know the stuff. The, the old joke is, you know, how do you know if you're around a firefighter? Don't worry, they'll tell you. Mm -hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? Because you just just. They'll tell you and just ask them and they can't wait to tell you usually about yeah. the fire service yeah. and everything about it. So when people are unprepared, I'm like, this isn't hard. You didn't have to get lucky to go and find this stuff out. Yeah. If you don't like people, go online, go Plus to the library, I mean, look there. at the fire service college, look at YouTube, listen to a podcast, whatever it might be. Yeah. It has never been so accessible now. And the, like this is the other this the podcast is a thing I wished existed when I was joined. Yeah, I would have listened to all of it. Yeah, probably not if it was me, you know. But I do. I am. I think people will be perpetually disappointed when they meet me because you probably built this person to be something that they're role, likely not. They are a walking bin fire, and with a, a myriad of half baked knowledge in lots of areas because the fire and rescue service has a lot of mm -hmm. disciplines. Yeah. And I try to be a master generalist. 
I try to know a little bit about a lot of stuff. Yes. To the extent that I can sustain a conversation yeah. with Sarah, who knows a lot more about this particular thing than I do. Mm. Because also when I do listen to some podcasts, I think the person's not really even listening because they already know everything Sarah's about to say. Yeah. This episode is brought to you in partnership with MSA Safety. Today, we have them to thank for the improved firefighter safety through connectivity in their brand new connected firefighter system. At the center of the connected firefighter platform is the MSA M1 SCBA with telemetry. That integrates straight in with the Luna system, which is a wireless all-in-one device creating an independent search and rescue network, providing edge detection, enhanced personal thermal imaging, while simplifying post-scene reporting and data retention. All of this then plugs into the FireGrid system for cloud-based connectivity, real-time information, and data-driven decisions for the incident commander. MSA are truly taking massive strides in the future of improved firefighter safety through connectivity in the brand new MSA Connected Firefighter platform. Now back to the show. We spoke about this last night, didn't we? Mm. That like when you were I talking said, about being prepared. Yeah, yeah, well, I said to you that when you come, when you're on the podcast and we listen to him, you are very, very educated in it. You have that background. You've, well, I said you've done the work. You put mm. in the work. You will read and go and look at things. You don't just go, "I'm going to wing it," yeah. because you want that person that you're interviewing to feel valued yeah. and listened to and heard. But yeah. you did say not as much as you think, I do enough. And you said exactly that, you do enough mm. to know something so that you can have that conversation, yeah. but not that much that you're not then in dis- you're disinterested in what they've got to yes. say. So you're still surprised and intrigued by the conversation. Yeah. And that's a great balance. That you can't you fake that. No, of course. You can't fake interest. So it's like, they send you a PDF, they send you a book, they send you whatever. Read elements of it mm-hmm. to enough to go, oh, I wish I had more time to read all of this. Yes. But I'm going to speak to Sarah tomorrow and she knows loads yeah. for like example for you about loads of stuff, but tactile ventilation. Like I know Sarah knows a lot about this. So I want to be interested when she says yeah. things. But if we've all, we've, uh, and equally I've not had your own, your experiences, so I won't ever be as prepared as you from your experience because I've not had them. But if we both read all the stuff, but I won't be as engaged. Yes. And I might even like, think you're wrong or correct you because of the way I've interpreted the thing but I always say that's not what it's about in this unconscious framing Sarah is the subject matter expert in this I'm not judge jury and executioner Mm. it's for the public to go Sarah just said smack to call very ventilation oh fucking everyone knows what you mean no one cares do you know what I mean so she accidentally she said the wrong acronym you know what I mean it doesn't matter she said positive pressure attack when she actually meant no one cares yeah yeah Mm -hmm. and that's the beauty of, I always think podcasting is the purest sense of social media mm-hmm. because, and I, I know this, having had some quite large, some people with quite large social media followings yes. on the podcast who can't, uh, not all, some are an inch deep. Do you know what I mean? And you go, oh, that's why you just post because yeah. you've not really got anything to say. Yes. 300 yeah. characters is actually tough for you to find enough things interesting to say. Yeah. Because you don't want to look stupid. A lot of it's just skin deep. And actually, over the course of an hour and a half, but also you can be misjudged. If someone posts something on, on, on Twitter, on X, on Instagram, Facebook, whatever. That can be limiting, trying to force. I, would, I struggle to force my thoughts. Yes. Into, that's why like workout stuff is easy because oh, this is workout did a workout today. Yeah, yeah and you can just, just put what put you did. The thing. It's yeah, always short, yeah. isn't it? It's easy. Yeah, yeah. But if I want to express myself and communicate something, I'm like, oh, I need more work. I need more characters. Yeah. Because I couldn't. It's this is the thing about the sound bites as well. Like I remember listening back to some of our sound bites from the first one. And now I know you so much better as well. Yeah. The sound bites are great, but I'm also like, how offensive? And I think about this with news. What, I'm going to encapsulate everything Sarah is in four sentences? No. How offensive. Uh, That's not even fair on Sarah. Mm. You know, like they they go to you on the BBC and go, oh, Sarah, tell us what you think of Ukraine then. And you go, what, in the nine seconds you've given me? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to fuck it up. Because there's no way, and Firefight is a typical example of it, it's very complex, it's very situational, it's very dependent on a multitude of factors that will change across every incident. Mm. And I'm like, tell us what ventilation is in 60 seconds, sir. No, I can't. I can't really. I mean, I, I could give you a cursory large brush stroke analogy if yeah. that will help you. But we'll need to go, because then there's always the, 
yeah if but you know and then it's yeah, always yeah if that it, but yeah. in, unless this unless mm -hmm. it's that you know what i mean because that stuff is very very hard so that's why i think social media and podcasting is the purest sense of social media because you can't fake it for two hours no you can't fake it for an hour and a half and equally you can't fake interest in someone that's mm -hmm. why i say like be hit that sweet spot where you're prepared enough yeah and interested enough intrigued enough into this person but i don't want to know everything about them because then it you could lose that you want to be that eternal student yeah, yeah. you want to have that playful curiosity with that person and you need to not be over prepared to have that but yeah when it comes to having those long conversations with people and that's why i think some people have booked a few times and then cancelled then cancelled then cancelled because they get so and some people like to have a massive preparation for it they like to have a massive list of questions yeah sometimes like, oh, i don't want you to catch me out i don't want to look stupid i'm not gonna make it look stupid yeah and if you make a mistake i always say to people if you make a mistake people don't realize how much the podcast is edited because yeah. we're getting better at doing it and it doesn't it sounds very seamless i ask you something and then you da, 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 and you go oh pete i've completely fucked that up can you ask me again yeah i'll just ask you again and yeah. we edit it out don't yeah. worry about it don't worry about it but people are worried about it yeah and oh, we're I so was. conditioned to interviews or we're conditioned as like instructors to presenting Yes. I stand here. This is the I talk, you listen bit. Uh -huh. So I'm just going to read off the board. Yeah. And you pretend to be impressed. Yeah. And it's just like that you've got to be ready for the third why. We've said this before. Like when a student goes, why? Oh, because, and I just say the same thing again. I hope you don't ask. Yeah. And then I <laughs> yeah. go, oh, okay. But, but, but why do we go around the left? And then you say something a bit more technical in the hope that you'll scare me. Well, due to national operational guidance in 1972 after the Telstar House. And it, uh, okay, yeah. I don't know that. I don't know what the fuck you're on about. That yeah. didn't actually help me. Nope. But you did, you, you, you built half of a wall in between us to hope that I don't ask again. Yeah. <laughs> but then if I go the third why, if you just go the, the, the parent's answer, because it said so. You can. Because I fucking said so. Yeah, you can. Yeah, but lots do. Or or lots build a good enough first or second wall yes, yeah. to push away. Also, I can spin it and go, well, Sarah, we covered that on day one. Yeah, and you go, oh, fucking hell, is it, everyone's going to think I'm <laughs> stupid. Yeah. And you're looking around and everyone is... And then you think... Oh, they yeah, don't okay. care, yeah. but you think they're thinking, we all know this, Sarah. Didn't you listen day yeah. one? No one heard it on day one because it wasn't said on day one. Yeah, but you'll just shut up now and we can move on because I've only got 40 minutes for this presentation and then we need to move on to the next pointless presentation. Yeah, rather than let's have a conversation about this. So, yeah. Has, anyone ever, used, some, yeah, has might, anyone ever used a ladder before? Well, they might not be the only one as well feeling that. Not. It's usually the way, but you do that? see a lot of recruits where you're thinking, or anyone in general, when you answer a question, they'll think, sit back and be like, that wasn't answered at all. And then they'll go, but I'm not going to ask again. But like you say, it's not just recruits. Just, I, yeah. I, I'm lucky enough to sit in various meetings. I'm not a, a high rank at all, but with the podcast, whatever, TC national stuff, going to events and seminars and some of the work that we're involved in moving over the next 12 months, people say a thing and they go, well, yeah, because then, then we had the phone and then we mobilized eight more crews because of uh, TSY. And I go, oh, sorry. Sorry, Sarah, what's TSY? And they go, um, oh, it's, uh, don't you know what TSY is? I'm like, no, no, I don't know what TSY is, no. And they go, oh, it's, um, it's, on the, it's on the paper. And then they sort of look at the room in a, who else knows what TSY is? No one says anything. And I'll say, does anyone else know what TSY is? No. And I'll go, right, can we all agree to not use acronyms that none of us understand? Yeah? And it's a very emotive, uncomfortable thing to say in rooms and people don't like it. And I don't intentionally try to make the person up front feel like a dick because anyone in their position, perhaps even including myself, would have used it because it's just become part of the vernacular mm. and no one knows what it means. Yeah. So stop saying it. Just stop saying it. Yeah. Just use another word or whatever but because that creates more and more distance. And then the next stranger enters the room as a vulnerable person, a direct entry person, a new person to the organization, a recruit. A new senior leader who's come from M&S, yeah? Yeah. And they think everyone also knows it. And no one knows it. Yeah. Yeah? It's, uh, it's one of those things like one of the guests recently was talking about wetting the tires. Okay. I don't know if you remember hearing that story. It was uh, 
So we used to wet the tires on fire engines. Do you know why? Nope. Because they were made of wood. Yeah. Okay. And when you would go to jobs, they would be parked too close, as they always are, uh, yeah. and they would expand and they could snap the spokes and right, the okay. wheel would get damaged. So you'd wet the wheel to keep it cool, stop the wood getting damaged and stuff like that. Only a decade or two ago did we stop doing it. Now, we've had rubber tires for a very long time. Yeah. And we were still wetting the wheels of rubber tyres because no one knew why we were doing it. And because the proper the proper answer probably was there because that's what we always do. Because that's what we always do. Because that's a typical fire service one. Yeah. Why do we do that? Well, because we've always done it. And you think, okay. There's a great study on monkeys in at the zoo, right? And um, they put this they put the food on a top platform. And whenever one of the monkeys tries to go, the zookeepers would spray the monkey with water so the monkey would not go up there anymore, yeah? Okay. And then when they'd start introducing new monkeys, they'd keep spraying to, to reinforce it and that sort of stuff. But then other monkeys would stop. If you were a new monkey and you tried to go and get the food, they'd still feed them, but they wouldn't let them go straight away up there. Yeah. If you try and get the food, we would all grab you, pull you to the floor and, and like hit you and beat you. Because none of us wanted to get sprayed. Okay. Yeah? Until eventually they stopped spraying them and slowly they transitioned every monkey out of the group and no monkey had ever seen another monkey get sprayed. But none of the monkeys would go to the top platform to get the food because they'd been conditioned for long enough by all the other monkeys and no one knew why we weren't going up there. But we knew you don't go up there. And that is what we do. Mm. It's what we do in the fire service. No one knows why we're doing a lot of the stuff. And this comes back to the instructor. The instructor should know the why. The instructor should know the debrief. They should understand that incident and yeah. what happened. And what when someone goes, oh, well, you know, do you know about Telstar House? Or do you know about Blainer? Or, you know, oh, well, we do that because of what happened at, uh, at Smithfield Market. And we go, oh, yeah, yeah. Have you read it? No. Why are you saying yes then? Why are you saying yes? Just say, actually, mate, I'm not familiar with that one. Could you send me a PDF? Could you send me something about it? And maybe they don't know either. But that's what they were sold. Yes. Do you know what I mean? I, did, I didn't know until the episode that's just gone out. So this episode will go out in a little while, but we recently released Chris Westfield. And Chris was at the Telstar House Instant, his first BA job, and he got trapped. And he and his partner got trapped, and they had to be pulled out. And the ceiling had come down on them. And this is the thing, like he said, this is what people don't tell you about cable entrapment and all that sort of stuff. Cables fall on you, you get stuck. Okay, when it gets really hot, all the rubber melts. And the cables, how hot is it up there? Eight, nine hundred degrees? Yeah. That's now on you. That melts into your helmet mm. and into your kit. So you can't just pull it off. Yeah. It's stuck yeah. to your kit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't know about this. They didn't have any entrapment cutters. Yeah. And also the Bergen principle that we do with BA sets. Mm -hmm. So this was rolled out properly after that. Because yeah. back then you just took it on, whack, shoulder straps, tight as you can. Yes. Whack, hip straps, tight as you can. Yeah. Compression. Lack of air gaps between it, less thermal barrier, less opportunity to dissipate the heat, all came from that one incident. Yeah. I didn't know that. And how long I've been doing it, we've been doing it nearly two decades. Yeah. Did you know that? No, I didn't know. I didn't know that. No. But how many have the humility? Know. You don't know, and it's okay. Yes. Because you don't know what you don't yeah. know. If I'd have known better, I'd have done better. But mm. unless I'm willing to swallow my humility, my, my ego, and sacrifice that, I'm not going to learn it. Yeah. Because we're both adults now, apparently. Yeah. We're 30 something and we should know the thing. And I'm a professional and I'm a watch manager. And at this point in my career, yeah. I shouldn't appear like I don't know what it is. We have to learn so much stuff. Yes. So much stuff. You're not going to be an expert in all of it. Try and get, encourage your crews to become micro experts in each thing. Mm. And then, mate, this is the podcast. Crowdsource your knowledge. Yeah crowdsource your knowledge yeah find people that know things you don't know try and be their friend not to use them because i i'm interested in interesting people yes yeah who know things yeah because they're interested and they know things yeah and i want to be their friend and hopefully i will learn some of their things that's why i like my parents because they when i'm a child they knew everything i knew nothing so i love them and, and obviously you love your parents for lots of different reasons but we have that interesting from where you go oh and it's the same with you like I like to think I learn something new every time I have a chat with Sarah. And it won't be about fire service. No. It will be about, because you, yes, I do a lot of podcasting, but I'm not a massive social butterfly, as you know. Yes. In the way that you are. Yeah. 
you consciously make time in your diary to socialize with people mm -hmm. and you're very good at it. It's one of the things I love about you and it's one of the things that complements our relationship in the podcast because you can do that bit and that helps us with networking and our relationship building and all that sort of stuff with the people in the sector. And I haven't got that muscle as well as you have. And I'm sure we could go into the psychology of childhood and all that sort of jazz, but for better or worse, that's just, and I learn something and when I see you communicate and I think, oh yeah, I like what Sarah did there. Whether she even knows she did it, it's probably just unconscious to her by now. Probably don't know I'm doing it. <laughs> because it's just the way you do it. And it's not to say, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and be, I'm going to try and be Sarah. No, I can't be Sarah. I could try and just put a little bit of that into my cocktail. Yeah. I'd love to do that. You know, I'd love to, yeah, I'm going to do a little bit of that. Yeah. But it's like we said that last night, didn't we, about the people you surround yourself with. Mm-hmm and how they influence you and we were talking obviously about things that I see in you and by being around you how I pick up things and I think oh right and that's great me you and Dave were obviously chatting and each of us were saying like complimenting each other and how the strengths and weaknesses that we have and I think it does being around people like that you pick up things and think oh yeah I like that and it does make you better let me offer a quick jujitsu flip then for you because I know you're chatting to me but we're also chatting chatting <laughs> Give people some insights into the bad things that I do. Like, what are the things that I do where you go, oh, the, where's the rub? Do you know what I mean? Where you go, mm, I love Pete, <laughs> but he's a bit, I always say <laughs> to people, I'm like tough, cocaine, right? where I'm like, it's nice to have a little bit. Is this like a roast? <laughs> but if you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to take it every day. I always say to people on like a 10,000 volt cable, oh, it's exciting, touch it, oh, oh, oh. If you grab hold of it, it will be too much all the time. So that's why I don't spend lots of time with any one person. But sorry, I'm kind of answering for you. No, it's fine. Um, Tell me the bits where you go like, ah, oh, Pete, I don't agree with you there. And you're a bit actually, no. The team here at the podcast are extremely excited to announce our brand new partnership with Patrol Store UK. Patrol Store have been serving the UK's police, fire and emergency communities and first responder sector since 2008, providing leading brands such as Hikes, Magnum, 511, Nebo, Opzulu, Highlander, AKU and many, many more of our favourites. They are now also supplying bespoke uniform, PPE and station workwear to fire services around the UK. So for all our listeners that are part of your USAR, your HEART team, your ISAR team, your armed response teams, your fire investigation, your NALO, your HAZMAT and all of the training departments that have got your own budgets be sure to get the absolute best for your team at a realistic price by contacting aaron and the team at patrol store and referencing the firefighters podcast patrol store will also be taking part in our listener competition giveaways as well as providing unique discounts to podcast listeners so for people that are always asking about hikes boots as an example, that is one unique discount code that is coming to you very soon through Patrol Store. We've also got some incredible bags. I mean, the Opzulu bags are a game changer. So you know the really Gucci and expensive tactical black bags that everyone's using in CrossFit workouts and taking to the gym and taking to stations? Well, they've basically got that, but it's made better and costs less because they're not slapping some Gucci expensive brand name on it and it's giving you what you want on a first responder salary. Be sure to keep your eyes in the notes of the episodes for links to unique offers and discount codes. And if you're looking to buy well and buy once, be sure to get in the notes and head over to Patrol Store UK. Now back to the show. So you already know the interrupting thing is hard. Yep. And I think now I'm aware of it, then it's like anything. When you're aware of it, you notice it more. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'm like, just shut up. Just shut up a minute. Just shut up. That's that's so good to hear that on here. Just sometimes. And like, yeah, but I, I think you do get used to it. Or I'll go... But that doesn't make it okay. Pete. No, I know it doesn't. And but you shouldn't go, oh, he's just like that. Well, no, he could, we talk, yeah, could change, couldn't he? Yeah. So yeah. that is... That's a thing. <laughs> yeah. In, I think, in podcast land and outside of it. Yeah. Um... There's not loads of things that you do that annoy me. Sometimes you'll say things and I'm thinking the mannerism <laughs> and then he goes and then I'll be like, really? Or, oh, okay. <laughs> and then you will look at me and go, oh no. And then, uh, But then you, we address well, it. I love how our relationship is like that. Like total transparency. We were recently at the Welsh together. We lobby. was. Yeah. And this was a moment and people are like, oh, would you say, no, we're going to talk about it. I was super busy as was everyone, so that's not an excuse. Uh -huh. Yeah, as was Sarah. Sarah had competed that day. I competed that day. It's getting to the end of the day. They hadn't organised a photographer uh, for whatever reason. They, they, they had a photographer because they've got some great photographs. Yeah, they're but probably anyway, all mine. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, well, no one's taking pictures of the It was very strange, that bit, yeah. So I, in a moment of haste, went, Sarah, take some photos. Yeah? And I saw it in your face, and as soon as it left my lips, I was like, 
you didn't need to say it like that. That was wrong. It was the end. The bit, I over think. familiarity with Sarah, you've you've overstepped yeah. the line there. I've, and you took it, and you were an absolute consummate professional. It was the look. It was the yeah, look. Yeah, it was a look. And I was just kind of looked and went, yeah, okay. Yeah. Stepped over thinking, who the hell does this guy think yeah, he is? Exactly. And then later on, you was like, um, and I went, yeah, just a bit. And you was like, I am genuinely sorry. And that's happened a couple of times, mm. literally, in what the couple of years that yeah, we've yeah. been what we're doing what we're doing. And I will say, I think it happened when we was on the course um, at the college. The college, yeah. And I was just like, just no. And you was like, yeah. what's up? And I was like, it's just too much. Or yes. just stop. And you went, oh, and then you went, oh, I'm sorry. And then we addressed it. But, but yeah. That's why. And I said it in this very room. And the person filmed the thing and sent it to you, didn't they? Uh, yeah. And I said, she makes me a better person. Yeah. Because she tells me the things I do need to hear that most people, it either it's too hard for them to say it or they're like, it's probably not going to listen. Or it's like, oh, just don't bother because he's just fucking, he's on, he's on broadcast. He's not on receive. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So they won't say it. But when someone's comfortable enough to go, okay, yep, yeah, Pete, yep, yeah, finished, right? You just did this, mm. okay? And I will forgive you for it. Don't do not do that again. Yes. Yeah. Because I didn't like that. And you always get the first one for free. Because you didn't know that I didn't like yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you probably knew I didn't like it because of the way I received it. But you get the first one for free. Yeah. So now we're going to set a precedent and some future expectations if you talk to me like that again, and you didn't talk to me like this, but I, I, that's how I receive information. And it's probably the reason I've had mixed reviews from students because yes. that's how I like to be taught. Mm -hmm. And I say it to all my managers, I need to have strong leadership. Yes. Because if you're all, I always think about this with my dog, like Kai, right? Kai is an apex predator. He's a big 55 kilo German shepherd. And he'll walk around and go, who's in charge? No one? Right. I'm in charge then because yeah. I'm a pack animal and I'm in charge because we need a lead. He needs to have a strong leader. Yes. Otherwise he would kill me. He could kill me if you were around in the middle of the field and he decides actually I'm in charge now. Well, game over. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> you know, I used to have it when I had two staffies before. Yeah. If we get down the bottom of the field and both of them decide they don't like me anymore, that's game over. Yeah. And again, a very extreme example, but you either are at your stage in your life or you've had enough good and bad experiences or our, it's a, probably a cocktail of the few. Our relationship is healthy enough where you go, I'm going to risk damaging our relationship by giving you this feedback because you need it and you need to hear this. Mm. And I'm not sure if anyone's telling you. Do you know what I mean? So our relationship is a, a nine out of 10. I'm willing to roll us back to a four because I know we can get back to nine. Mm. Four but, is low. Whatever. I would only ever roll us to a five. Okay, roll us to a five. But... Like you say, I'm, I'm willing, because if you keep thinking it's a nine, Pete, but we're not a nine, because we're now a one, yeah. yeah? But because I've not told you, all that's happening is I'm taking my happiness retracting from this. I'm shrinking from this relationship, and people will feel this, even in their own personal life. That person is shrinking away from this relationship, and you think it's all great, and you don't know why they're being yeah. weird, yeah? Because you're not listening, or you've created an environment where they don't feel comfortable enough to tell you that I don't like that. This is very emotive and I apologise to anyone that is going through this at the moment. But you have to take responsibility for the fact that I am allowing Sarah to treat me this way. I'm not in North Korea where my sphere of choice is significantly less. I could just leave. There'll be a big cost. There's always a cost. You go, well, no, I didn't have a choice. Ever heard the quote that true leaders are readers? Well, we believe this is true. Listeners often ask where we go to keep our finger on the pulse of what's happening in the sector globally. So there are a few key publications which I encourage you to go check out. Now, if you're looking for insights on disaster management, fire protection, and firefighting for us, we go to Asia Pacific Fire Magazine. And when you're looking for the latest on the Middle East fire protection industry and fire services, it's Gulf Fire Magazine. And our quarterly check-in is with International Firefighter Magazine, reporting to municipal, industrial, and fire training professionals. Now, next up, I'm widely accepted to be the global voice for passive and active fire protection this is a good one it's international fire protection magazine and finally and perhaps the most relevant to our predominantly uk audience i'd strongly suggest subscribing to uk fire magazine reporting to the united kingdom fire protection industry and fire services we're really excited to announce that after a long-standing relationship and mutual respect we've now partnered with mdm publishing who bring you all of these essential publications because in a world of change the learners shall inherit the earth while the learned shall find themselves perfectly suited for a world that no longer exists 
Eric Hoffer said that, and I believe he was right. So keep growing, keep learning, and keep yourself in the know and at the cutting edge of what's happening globally by dropping into the notes. And as a gift from the podcast, you can actually subscribe to any of these publications for free using the link in our notes. Now back to the show. And I always say to people, if your parents are alive, try and have a relationship with them. Absolutely, yeah. I promise you, I promise you, I don't know you, I promise you, you'll regret it. Oh, you'll yeah, regret 100%. it. The what they've done. They've hurt you, they've hurt your mum, hurt your dad, they've stolen from you. Okay. You Ultimately, got to, you got to they're still your mum and dad at the end of the day, aren't they? Still your mum and dad. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And also, their life, is, they, we think our parents, you know, we, we, when we're born, they're, they're everything. Of course, they're perfect. Look at, oh my God, my dad is my hero. Mum, when you're a boy, as a, as a child, you're actually in love with your mum. Mm. The reason you want to hug them and kiss them and hold their hands all the time, you actually fancy them. You're infatuated with your mum. And there's an old, um, oh, it wasn't Caesar, it was someone else, where killed his dad, married his mum. Right. Because that's the full embodiment of, I want to become my father. Right, yeah. And then yeah, I think he killed her as well. But uh, eventually, because like, I'm sleeping with my mum, it's a bit weird. You know, <laughs> maybe I want somebody else. She's, she's 30 years older than me. But we have that where we don't want to think, of, but parents, I've got kids. My life is still not perfect. I have challenges at work. I have challenges personally. Lots of things I'd have done differently with my own with my own children. But to them, that was just childhood, so they knew no different. Yeah. You've got to be able to move past that. But sorry, closing the loop on training people, you've got to take responsibility for some of that. Yes. I allowed this person to treat me that way and I didn't tell them that wasn't appropriate. Or also, uncommunicated expectations are predetermined resentment. If I don't tell you I don't like that, I'm very tactile, as you know. We hug all the time. Oh, yeah. And when we're sat together, some people think we're a couple. You've got a great relationship with your partner. But people will see us and they might think we're a couple because we are very tactile. We sit together, we hug. We take great photos. We take great photos. <laughs> and if we're sat on a sofa together, we'll sit close to each other. Oh, it's a bit cold. Let's sit close to each other. Yeah? Because you're like a sister. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But if you hadn't said to me on the first day, and you didn't, but if, you, like, if I go to hug someone and they don't say, actually, Pete, let's shake hands. Yeah. Because I'm not really a hugger. And I'm yet. not. I'm really like, like give me a hug. Yeah, I'm like, exactly. <laughs> it's all just chip my hand. I'm but like, you'll oh. eventually resent me if you've always hated hugs and I've always tried to uh-huh. give you a hug. Yeah. Just tell me you don't like hugs. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that's that thing. Again, with recruits, with whatever. And we do do them a disservice because we don't. And I have made this, I try, it's on like slide three of my introduction. I talk about the switch. Mm-hmm. Inside here. First name basis, it's a democracy, it's chat, it's ideas, it's all challenge and debate, yeah? When we're out there on the training ground or eventually the incident ground, it's not a debate really. Unless you see, unless I give you a direct instruction that you see there is evident, obvious danger to what I've just asked you to do, then that becomes the cyclic, reinform me with the information to raise my situational awareness. Because I've not maliciously said to you, go and walk off the edge of that building, I've just said something, but I'm not there. Mm-hmm. And this is the same like with BA. Once you've gone through that door, you become the incident commander in the room. Oh, yeah. I can't see what you're doing. I've got t- some tertiary knowledge of what I think the building layout is. I uh, maybe had a look next door. I've questioned the occupier. Off you go. Yeah. I think in, left, up, right, there. But maybe when you go in, you go, oh, no, that's there. Or the bloody stairs are burnt yes. through or whatever. Now, I couldn't just keep screaming down the radio. I said, go up the goddamn stairs, Sarah. What happened? They died. Okay. What, what, they told the stairs. It's the old Nazi. I always use this example. Some people hate it. You read the interviews of the, the Nazi soldiers. Yeah. Why did you do I was just following orders. I was just following orders. But didn't you know it was wrong? Didn't it morally feel wrong? Gassing people. No. <laughs> What's my choice? I was, I was just following orders. So that's where in the fire services, you develop that experiential knowledge. Chris, again, gave a great analogy of procedure and experience on a graph. Yeah? Mm. Like, if you're a brand new firefighter, you will fucking stick to that procedure so hard, and you should do, because yeah. you have no experiential knowledge. You will follow that so tight to the line, you go up the graph and across to the right and achieve the task. Uh-huh. Yeah? Yeah. But then as you get an experienced firefighter, and this is a flexible curve and it can go too far the other way, as you start to go up and you start to follow, you go, oh, that doesn't apply here because I've got through the, like how many times you see them sitting at the front of the door? Open, gus, gus, close, 
Boom, boom. Yeah, that's it. And you're like three times because we did it three times in training. Yeah. Or you opened it. It's clear room. It's concrete floor. It's perfectly clear. Yeah. What are you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm following orders. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. We give them a foundation of knowledge, don't we? And then they build on it with their experience. Yeah. yeah. It's just pantomime otherwise. You know what? I'm going through the room. Watch. Sweepy, sweepy, wavy, wavy, tappy, tappy. Yeah. It's John McDonough. We created the pulsing robot 2.0. Mm. Yeah. What are you doing? Pulsing? Do you like it? Why are you doing it? They would rip the... <laughs> He wouldn't. No, I don't. Pulsing. Don't you like it? I'm like, what is, is it working? I don't know. It will go out eventually. Yeah. You know, so that procedural and experiential knowledge, that's the curve. But communicating to people the procedure. And when you're in training, you're learning to drive. Yeah. Tell me everything you're doing. I'm checking my mirrors. Yeah. Doing yeah. the thing. I'm sweeping. I'm stamping. Wicked. Positive because you're reinforcing it, aren't you? Like we've said. Exactly. It's like when someone tells you a thing, we've been through this before, when you write the thing down, when you read the thing back to yourself. So by being that narrator of your yeah. story or for yep. that particular time, tell me everything you're doing. It is enforcing it. I'm scanning high, mid, low. Yeah. I said this to the, the lads and lasses when we did a BA drill because we've got a girl who's looking to come back on the run. Yep. Um, so we're going through some BA training. So I said to one of my firefighters, just for t I need you to exaggerate what you're doing and I want to hear it because I said that I'll enforce it and I want it to be passed on like yes. peer observation and stuff and you do like saying it saying the thing rather than just well I know what I'm doing well say it I want to hear it I want to know that process yeah, yeah, yeah. you're just reinforcing that learning yeah it's muscle memory it's positive affirmation mm. it's I'm doing the thing yes you're doing the thing yeah. doing the thing. yes you're doing the thing yeah. and then when we come out I saw you do the thing I loved it Yeah. I heard you say you're doing the thing then you did the thing because if you go turning left and then you go right you know because otherwise I wanted you to go right I would do I wanted you to go right and you went right but I didn't know you meant to go left yes do you know what I mean because if you're just doing the thing I'm like are you consciously doing the thing yeah or did you just do that because I've watched you once and you fluked it yeah I think like, as well the conversation between the BA teams because obviously we go in as incident commanders, safety officers, however we're in there with, with the scanners and you can see them but you don't want to be encroaching on their space because you want to give them that space. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you can't, I don't know what they're thinking, but if I understand I what they're what you're thinking saying or the rationale yeah. <clears throat> behind the decision, especially now when we've made a massive movement from stick to your search patterns and your lay, if yeah. you can justify moving from a left to a right yep. and it's, it's safe to do so, you've justified it, then brilliant, do it. We yeah. want to see that, but I need to hear their rationale behind it. So narrate it. I want to hear what you're saying. Let me inside that head of yeah. yours. What are you thinking? Because then you can go, yeah. And like you said, it's not then a right, wrong decision or you know why they've done it. Because like you said, they might just be like, I'm just going to go over here because we are. No, I want to know you're going over there because you've got yeah. a heat signature. Yeah. And you and you can see the flow pattern. Yeah, the flow yeah, patterns. Yeah. And stuff, Let me so. join you on your logical yeah. thought path. Yeah. Because <clears throat> you arrived here, take me with you. How, how did you get there? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, and it's like when you're speaking to, and they say, you're at an incident with radiation. Tell me your considerations. And they go, ah, time distance shielding. Boom, back of the net. So they've remembered. What, what does list. that mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you just said a list. Mm. Well done. Love that. I've actually had someone say, oh God, there's one more thing on the list. And I was, my, uh, I was an examiner, I just went, Oh my God. <laughs> you just said it. Don't say and I was like, sorry. And he said, oh, I know there's like seven things that I've remembered off the list. And I was like this. Okay, expand on this one for me. Uh, and I'm like this. But I think we need to look at this again, don't we? Yeah. Uh, so we can't it's not an lists. accusation. I'm not saying you don't know. No, no. But you're just like a list. You're just parroting it back yeah. to me. And that's all it is. Don't be wrong, I've done that in my past. Because it's, it's, it's a useful way. Yeah. But like, like with the podcast, I will have bullet points in my head mm -hmm. yeah but they're just jump off points yeah you know what i mean so time distance shielding great talk to me about shielding yeah and they'll go okay uh well it means basically different types of radiation alpha beta gamma yeah and some of it can permeate your skin um some of it will be stopped by ppe some of it like i mean shielding like you stand behind a fire engine you stand behind a wall uh -huh. yeah they have lead barriers did you know this in x-ray machines that thing that's their oh right okay yeah, yeah. And then we know. Brilliant. You're just, yeah, and you're drawing Don't just say line, shielding. Yeah. Yes. Because And then you go, what do you mean? Oh, wait. Well, basically, there's a big lead shield on the fire engine. No, I don't think there is. Is there one in your service? Well, no, but like in other services, they have them. No, I don't think they do. Because I've been around the... Yeah. I don't think they have them. Yeah, shielding. Oh, it's the dome that we just put around the incident. 
what does it mean? What is shielding? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. helping people expand on those elements. And that again comes past the, the third why. You know, you can't just go presentation on radiation, alphabet, gamma, blah, blah, blah. Let's talk about Novichok. Let's talk about, okay, what does that mean? What the thing is you'll get find out, found out as an instructor if you don't know. And it's a Some horrible will. place to be though mm. in the front of... 34, 20s, whatever with numbers, with different services yeah. do different numbers. Um, and they're asking you something and they all look to you and literally it's the first week. So you are that fountain of knowledge. Everything you say is gospel. So be very careful what you say. And then you're thinking... They don't know what good looks like. No, but no you idea. want to be able to give them the right answers. But you say, if you're just reading from a PowerPoint, they'll, they know, they're not daft. Yeah. And you do just think... <laughs> and I have gone sometimes, because I think you have to, you have to be like, like you've said, just swallow it and go, I don't know. I don't know, and I'm going to find, out, find for out, you out for the end you. of the yeah. day. And you genuinely do go and find out and come back to them. Most do. Yeah. The good ones do. Yeah. <laughs> the other ones do. just hope they don't ask. And then they again. say about, the, obviously, the PowerPoints, it's nice to have prompts. That's all there. They should be there just for prompts. Yes. Bullet points. And then you then look at the recruits, the oh, audience. And engage whoever is the with group, them. Yeah. And then you then talk. And then I've watched brilliant instructors where yeah. they'll then just almost perch on a table and they will just talk about fire behaviour. And I think, I'm God, God I want to be like you. Yeah. <laughs> But you've got to have them stories in your head. The story's story is amazing story. because people then they buy into it and they're engaging and they're just you're selling that thing to them. Yeah. And, and it is I love the story. Well, they learn through a story. Yes, that's how the Bible was written. Yeah, that's why we learn through fables. Mm. You know, um, Simon Sinek always says, "I love him." Don't tell a story without making a point. Mm -hmm. Don't make a point without telling a story. Yeah, yeah. They should always because it'll it'll embed it in them yes. easier because they can see themselves in that. Yeah, like if we say. Give money to, you know, charity because 70,000 Africans are dying. And you go, oh, well, 70,000 Africans. That's what, what, how many is that? I don't know. How many is in Wembley Stadium? Well, I don't know. For, fucking, it's an impossible number. Mm -hmm. doesn't mean anything to me. But they don't do that. They go, let me tell you the story of Malala Youssef. Now, she wasn't a starving African. She was the young lady that got shot in the head by the Taliban on the bus. Mm -hmm. But they tell the story. Daisy the calf. Yeah. Mm. BSE, yeah? What was BSE? BSE is killing all our cows. Oh, so bovine spongiform encephalitis, mad cow disease. It's killing all our... No one cares, okay? Oh, oh, you mean we're setting fire to all the cows yeah. in the fields? Let me tell you the story of Daisy as the cow. As soon as you said Daisy, I'm like, I'm in. Daisy the cow was the... It was on the Daily Mail or whatever it was. And they told the story and they go, hook you, get you in. I want to do it for Daisy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah? Yeah, we all clapped for Daisy. Yeah? We all clapped for the watch manager for Grenfell and we said I'm Michael Dowd yeah mm. that's what a watch that's what people said that was the comments that were going around because I'm that I'd have done that yeah. you yeah, yeah. the service have let me down you have not prepared me adequately and again some of that's my responsibility I would have done that mm -hmm. I'd have made those mistakes yeah yeah none of us are ready okay we're all students with different levels of experience no one is the god of knowledge bow before me as i disseminate this you're lucky to be here you're welcome yeah none of us okay none of us even paul grimwood yeah i've had loads of chats with paul uh, yeah paul's paul's very much that i'm a student with different level of experience yeah i've put myself out there i went to new york i went here i've, I've, I've just made more mistakes than you have mm. yeah that's why i look like i know a lot more and i probably do know a lot more he knows a lot more than me yeah he's just been willing to look stupid more times and learnt more from it yeah. and done the hard yards and done the data drive. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But in the fire service, we don't expect that level of excellence from everyone. You and I were talking with uh, Dave last night around this. And again, it's a John McDonough quote. We rise to a level of mediocrity that avoids further scrutiny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We aren't creating exceptional firefighters. They're happening by accident. And a lot of that is down to the individual's perseverance, tenacity, and passion. Yes. That is not preloaded from the service or the brigade. We don't install that into people. I always say to people, I'd rather have a mindset than a skill set. Yep. Okay. You come to station and you say, oh, I've got a, I'm a water expert. Okay, great. But you're pessimistic. You're bitter. Mm -hmm. You hate the service. Every time I turn around, you're going, have you heard what's happening at so-and-so station? Yeah. You're rolling your great eyes voice. when drill starts. Yeah, I don't want you. I'd yeah. rather have Sarah that knows nothing about water rescue because she'll learn it in like four months, maybe less. She's a very smart lady. Yeah, and she's got a great mindset. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, that's what I would said. rather have that mindset. It's the attitude that they're coming in with, isn't yeah. it? And I said that to you, like I will say to the new recruits that when I was an instructor, um, the and I would stand, it was like, we all have our little pattern that we do as an instructor, but mine, I would say, stand up in front of them and say, if you've got the right attitude and you give it everything you've got, we as instructors will give you that tenfold yeah. because that is what counts. Yes, everyone makes mistakes. We're not going to get it the first time. I wasn't the perfect recruit at all, by far. I got disciplined in... Uh... Yeah. I rolled before my Before I even eyes. finished my thing. <laughs> oh, too much. I had a verbal warning before I even finished yeah. training school. And it's because no one's perfect, but, and you might, it, who's running might be a struggle for you and we do it time and time and time again. But if you've got the right attitude and you want to learn and you want to do well, bring it on. I'll yeah. have 24 of you every day. You've got to have the right attitude from the off. Yeah. Because if you haven't, see you later. And Can't people buy into say that. like, and it's an accidental phrase, we say meet me halfway. You don't even have to meet me halfway. Mm-hmm. Instructors, I got in trouble for this and someone said to me, your problem is, Pete, you want them to get it more than they want to get it. Not for everyone. Some people really want to get it. But some people, meh. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh, didn't know it. Uh, well, you do. You need to know it though. And I want you to want to I know want it. the passion. And I want I you it. to be annoyed you didn't <laughs> yeah. know it. I don't want you to beat yourself over the head and have a pity party and see you out in the yard no. crying. Oh. Yeah. But I want you to go, ah, you're right. And it's like well, we just did feedback a minute ago, you know, you go, and I go, you're right. Damn, mm. that hurt because I care. Yes. If I don't care, I go, well, it's you problem, it, Sarah. Mm. Yeah. I don't care what anyone thinks about me. Yeah, you fucking do. Everyone does. You don't just make them your world. Yeah. And same with the instructor. You should want the instructor to be impressed by your... Now, not every instructor, and you shouldn't attach all of your personal value because they might be a dick. Uh-huh. And they're also maybe a fraud. Yeah. Yeah. But you should want to be good at the thing. Yes. Do you know what I mean? You should take value for him to be good at the thing. But it's hard when we set it up in such a in such a case where some people just don't want it that much. No. And that's why we have that mediocrity thing where we just set the bar there and we go, it's, it's enough, isn't it? They're good enough, Sarah. Yeah. And the good question we always ask people is, well, would you wear with them, Sarah? And that's always the thing we do, isn't it? Oh, yeah. And we did when that you do your reaccreditation yeah, yeah. and you go, would you wear with them? No. Well, then it's a no. Yeah. Now let's help articulate procedurally why it's a no, because we can't just go, nah, they're no, not no. good enough. No, but it helps That's not useful feedback. Doesn't it? But it's what's like... your pulse check saying? Yeah. Would you have them on your crew? Do you think they're a safe firefighter? And you go, not really. Yeah. Okay, so you're just struggling to articulate why. Together as a group, we'll crowdsource the feedback mm. and we'll go, right, Sarah, on three occasions, you were observed to do X. Yeah. yeah? This does not align to service procedures and therefore we are asking you to retake or you will be retaking yeah. this course at a future date. Yes. You can't just go, uh, the assessment from the instructors says they didn't meet the mark. Yeah. That's, that's crap feedback. Yeah. That doesn't help. Same with promotion processes. Uh, it's good, but it's not what we're looking for. You know, as the old catchphrase guy would say, <laughs> that's it, isn't it? It's just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Nah, it's good, but it's not right. Yeah, it's yeah, the, yeah. yeah, it's good, but it's not right. Yeah. And that's, that's what we give people as uh-huh. feedback sometimes. And we need to give them, because the people that really do want it, they'll go, yeah, oh, yeah, is there any said more, on more three occasions, n- oh, I say, oh, I'm never going to do that again. Mm-hmm. Never going to do that yeah. again. But they've got to want it. They've got to have the mindset. Yeah, yeah, the want's got to be there. Right, I'm going to bring it back. Let's. Let's I'll bring it back. So... If you're a regular listener to the podcast, then chances are you are big into your own personal development and the development of firefighters around you. So I wanted to remind you of our mobile app drill book. This is a free training and development resources made by firefighters for firefighters. Heading on to Drillbook, you will find internet debriefs, radio messages, knots and lines, quick reference guides, quizzes every single day. We've got useful links to the ERG, to Web Rescue, to Jessup, Euro Rescue, 10 Second Triage, National Operational Guidance, and not to mention our daily quizzes where you will find questions on extrication, casualty handling, breathing apparatus, fire development, water rescue, rope rescue, you name it. It is the go-to resource if you've got a spare five minutes on the firehouse to develop yourself and those around you. Not only that, if you're looking to get into the fire service, we've got advice on there on interview questions, interview answers. You can build your own questioning in there. And again, remember, this is built by firefighters 
first four firefighters. So you can add your own drills in there. You can pick the drills that you find the most favorite. There is literally hundreds of training ideas, hundreds of drills in there. Remember this app is absolutely free and it grows every single day down to the contributions of our thousands and thousands of users. It's freely available on Android, Apple, and you will find it in the links for this podcast. Remember it's called personal development, the clue's in the name. You've got to work twice as hard on yourself as you do on the job. So always be growing, always be developing. Now let's get back to the show. The podcast. Yeah. How long has it been going for now? Um, fantastic question. I should know. I think four years. Okay. Maybe slightly longer. Okay. And why? Where'd the podcast come from? Why did you decide to do a podcast? There must have been something like, where was, where did this start? Because that's, I think that's a big question that people want to know. I want to know. Like, why did you think I'm going to do a podcast? And did you think that it was going to be where it is now? Uh, yeah, I don't even know where it, I always think it's still in its infancy, massively mm. in its yep. infancy. <clears throat> but that's what I love most about it as well. I feel like I always say to you, like we're filling up the dam. Like when the dam breaks, we'll watch it go, watch it go. And it never will break. There'll never be a moment where you go, now we're successful. No, it doesn't happen. No, no. In the same answer it relates to your question, which is why did I start the podcast? Uh, because of 27 half-baked reasons. Do you know what I mean? It, there was no like... I think people like to think something's going to happen, then this. Yeah, when yeah. did your life turn around, Sarah? When did you realise, like, I was, I'm recording an addict. When did you realise, uh, 27, yeah, like 48, it was and when you're like, oh, oh, eventually you went, no. Mm. I mean, you can't really articulate the tipping point. So there's several things for me. One was, how good you feel when you're having a chat with someone that really loves something? Mm, you know yeah. whatever they're interested in yeah, they're yeah. fascinated with podcasting they're interested in cars they're an expert in playing the violin they love art they love football. whatever someone's fascinated with history stoicism whatever you talk to them and you go i don't even care about it and i love this yeah i'm so i i love listening to you be so entrenched like when you kid says oh slime slime's amazing love slime you know and they tell you all about slime all the time and you're like is that i'm excited about it and you're like you're not having it in this house yeah, yeah. this is gonna, gonna run i don't even like it you but you've like made it. me love you've this chat me... i remember hearing and i apologize i can't attribute the quote to anyone or maybe it wasn't even a person to quote i've just reimagined it in my head is if you set yourself on fire with enthusiasm lots of people are coming to watch you burn mm. yeah People will gather around to hear you set fire to your enthusiasm. Yeah. Because they love it. It's that. It's someone that's passionate. And you go, that's so infectious. Mm -hmm. You so love. My sister is a great teacher. Yeah. She just moved to a head teacher. So proud of her. She never wanted to be a head teacher. <clears throat> but she just loves it so much. Yes. She's entrenched in it. And she always says to me, it's not a job, it's a vocation. Yeah. I, I'm studying it when I'm not work. You know, I'm just everything I look at, I'm looking at through the filter of teaching and education uh -huh. and personal interaction. She's amazing. And, and which systems. will probably make her what she is and how great she is. But it's the same for firefighters. Mm. I was saying to Dan Stevens on a podcast with him recently, he's like, everywhere you go, if you're a passionate firefighter, you look at it through the filter of firefighting. Uh -huh. You go into a building, you know, you go somewhere lovely, like we're in um, Shrewsbury now. <clears throat> And we're passing some beautiful buildings. I look at them and go, what would I do if that was on fire? Yeah. How would I, do I, does that look like it's got two stairwells? Is it, would I, how tall is it? Do I think that's got a riser? We, like, go to our <laughs> yeah, we go to a hotel. Yeah, we go to a hotel. Where's the emergency exits? What floor am I on? Am I close to the window? Where could I get out? Yeah. I get out? You know? You open the door and go, oh, they've got fire blankets in every room. So, yeah, wow. it is. You know, and you don't, you're seeing all this and you as a passionate person, Sarah, you were picking up on all this, but you wouldn't articulate it. You wouldn't come downstairs and say to your partner, hey, you know, I don't see the, did you have a look in your room? Did you see that? Well, I mean, yeah. you two would share a room, but it's like, <laughs> yeah. did you see that? No, I might say, like, did you see your room? <laughs> no, I just like, I just went in and I put the telly on or I went in and did this. Yeah, yeah. Or they saw something different. Yes. Because they'll go, did you see outside the back window, the park? Because yeah, they're tuned into dialed into things. And they'll go, things, did yeah. you know there's a CrossFit gym two minutes away? And you'll go, no. There you love that thing. And everywhere they go, they're looking for that. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. It's always, um, it's the red car syndrome. 
right? Oh, yes. Where you go, oh, I'm going to get a red car. Yeah, no, and that makeup no of car. Got, yeah, and now I'm going to get a red Master MX-5, <laughs> as everyone got about Everybody 10 years ago. Got. Yeah, and you went, because no one's got one, and they're cool and they're sporty and they're sexy and they're this. I'm going to get a Tesla. Cause there's a, and then you, you get one and you go, they're fucking everywhere. Yeah. Everyone's got one. No, they were already there. Yeah. But it didn't matter to you. Yes. So you didn't see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think it's brilliant. The concept of that still baffles me. You have kids. It's so brilliant. No one's got kids. Oh, fucking hell. All my friends have got kids. But then the kids never mattered to you before because you're like, uh, that, whatever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But then everyone's got kids. You start you start CrossFit and you go, oh, yeah. Don't really know anyone that does it. Oh, there's five people on the watch. Yeah. And they all, he's been doing it for two. What? You went to the regionals? How did I not know that? Because it didn't care until last week. Yeah, yeah. Now I care and it's important to me. Oh, I'm struggling getting into cooking because my missus used to do all the cooking and she's left me. Yeah. Oh, James is a chef at work. Oh my God. The last three months I've spent with him making meals on the watch, I've learned so much yeah. and I love it. And I've, I've just bought my own spice rack and I've just got my own thing. And I went to Ikea and I got all these special utensils. And I don't know. You love it. Uh. Have you got a grinder? No. Have you got a bread maker? Yeah. And this person's got, they just suddenly they love cooking. Mm. That is the second reason. I'm, that's what I'm saying. It's no, there's no one answer to it. Um, you never do a short answer. Know, that is not you. Story. There's another thing. But, uh, and then the additional layer was my own personal journey. So recovering addict, when I was going through the height of my addiction, uh, 21, 22, and this was predominantly steroids, growth hormone, but also speed, a little bit of cocaine, amphetamines, right. stimulants. Right, okay. And you're, I always sold it to myself that I'm not really a drug addict. I'm just looking for performance hacks. I just want to be awake all the time. I want to be big and strong. No, I want to be stronger. No, I want to be bigger. Yeah. yeah. I want to be really oh, so smart, intelligent. I want to be dialed in and wired in. Mm. Yeah. When I'm working security and working on the doors, I want to be so switched on. Yeah. Or oh, hyper stimulated, hyper focused. Yeah. Yeah. Amphetamine, speed, coke, whatever. Stay up all night. Go straight to work in the morning. Burn the midnight oil. Sleep is the cousin of death. Yeah. Height of addiction. Mm. When I worked through that and my body started to show the signs that this is not sustainable, I'd already paid a big personal cost in relationships being being chucked out um, when I was very young. My parents found needles in my room. Um, and you just write them off. You just go, oh, well, that's the cost of being great. <laughs> you know, that's the cost of me needing to go in this path. Yeah. You don't get it because you're not in mindset. Yeah, you, yeah. You're lazy. You're fat. You don't want to be the strongest man in the world. You wouldn't get it. Everyone takes steroids, you know. It's okay. Blah, blah, blah. We justify to ourselves. Yeah, it's a story we tell We ourselves. are fantastic yeah. salespeople to ourselves. Yeah? If we can justify it, it's okay. I justify, it's okay. Uh, of course yeah. it's okay. Sarah's doing it. Sarah's doing it. She called in sick as well. Just my mum out there, I wasn't in. doing it. <laughs> yeah. Well, sorry, you don't like that. It's the massive delts that give it away. Now. But, you know, <laughs> well, we do. You know, sick at work. Ah, uh, well, everyone's had a week off sick this year. Yeah, it's okay. I don't feel great, but you know what? I need a week off. Mm. I'm sick. Yeah, everyone's yeah. doing it. It's okay. No, it's not okay. Yeah, and it's not sustainable if everybody keeps doing that massive uh-huh. cost, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I justify it to myself. Paying the massive personal cost didn't mind. But it's actually when my daughter was born. Okay. So Lily is 12 next week. So I'm 33, 21. Uh-huh. 12 years ago. And it was something about, I don't mind lying to Sarah. don't mind lying to my parents. It's uncomfortable, but I'll just lie. Uh-huh. It's easier because she doesn't get it. She doesn't get it. Yeah. And my wife unconsciously was an enabler. Okay. Uh, for a fairly obvious terminology, but that just means the person allows it to happen. Yeah. They don't call bullshit. They don't stop you. Yeah. They might even support you and help you. She didn't help me, but she didn't stop me. Okay. Because... Again, not to make it about her, but she had a bit of the abused puppy syndrome where she'd gone from something really bad. Now this is not as bad. Okay. Because yeah. I'm not drunk. I'm not violent. I don't steal from her. Not that this person did any of these things, but as an example of bad things. Yeah. I don't steal from her. I don't uh, hit my kids. I don't gamble. I don't have seedy people around the house. 
I'm reliable. I'm financially supportive. But he takes a lot of drugs. But yeah. he's not that bad. Yeah, yeah. He loves me. Yeah. Again, the story people tell themselves were in there. Yeah, you're right. Sarah does do that. But she loves me and she's very nice. Yeah, but she didn't need to do that. Yeah, like Pete's a great friend. But 1% of the time or 10% or 80%. If it was 80, I'm sure I wouldn't sustain it. But he does that. I don't like it. 100 is never going to get there. But as we wander up and down that spectrum of what's appropriate and what's okay and what's ni- what's mutually beneficial for our relationship, we've got to keep calibrating each other because mm. we change. We all change through life. So I was still doing it when I was when I first got with my wife and hiding it. Lots of drugs in the house. Oh, I'm a better person though. I'll put them in a the garage. Yeah, or whatever. I'll hide them in my car. Uh-huh. Yeah, kept doing it, kept doing it. When Lily was born, I thought, oh, that's really inconvenient because for me, when you have a child, it's like cutting your heart out and then putting it in something external from you and hoping it doesn't get hurt. And the idea of you being the thing that hurts it is ironically massively Mm self-sabotaging okay? because you upset her and that hurts you maybe even more because you're supposed to be the one that avoids the harm to the child, your child, and you've been the source of the harm. Yeah. Ah, shit. Yeah. Mm. So the idea of lying to her couldn't just couldn't seem to swallow that one yeah it was a bit too big yeah couldn't cut it down couldn't digest it couldn't seem to get it in and you start thinking about being a parent talk to the parents and a lot of parents probably don't take drugs and not tell their kids i'm sure sure some do well again the drugs conversation they all drink alcohol a lot of them do they are taking drugs (laughs) um but they're not injecting drugs into themselves on a daily basis which i was and I think a lot of parents are hypocrites and that's a very emotive statement to make but they will stand at the school gates and I've seen them and they will go do your best try your hardest be a good person Sarah yeah don't tolerate things you don't need to tolerate from other people yeah follow your dreams yeah the child won't but has every right to say why aren't you doing that mommy why aren't you doing that, Daddy? You cry every day at home. Why? Why are you so unhappy? Yeah. Why are you always angry about your job? Why do you hate it? Why do you keep going? Do they make you go? Hypocrite. Yeah? We lie to ourselves. Mm. And that's okay. And if you think you can, you lie to your children. Now, telling your kid you love your job and not loving your job is not the same as telling your kids you don't take drugs and they find needles in the house and you invent a reason there's needles in the house. Different, Mm -hmm. but on the same spectrum of lying to your kids. It's the same concept, okay? Just at different degrees of severity. Mm. I can't do that. Of course I could. I choose not to do that. And that's very, very, very important to me. Probably because I've lied to so many people and it just became so easy. Yeah. I could look you dead in the face and tell, oh, bet your parents' life on it. Yeah, bet your parents' life on it. Yeah, telling you, don't take drugs. Yeah, I'd look you square in the eye. I don't care because it's, the denial is so deep. Mm. You know what I mean? The edge of my realm of just hypocrisy is so far, you can't even see the outlines. You yeah. can't see the edge of this. It's, it's your world for all you know. It's the Truman Show. The lie is so big, you never know. Yes, yeah, yeah. Until you get to the edge of the world. But he had, you know, if anyone's seen the film, The Truman Show with Jim Carrey, yeah. sails to the edge, hits the wall, you know, jumps out the boat, it, the ocean's only, oh, knee, it's like the ocean's only knee deep. And he's like, my whole world has been a lie. Yeah. And there's a real world. And some people's lies, when you're in a home, that's the edge of your world. Your parents are the edge of your world. Yeah. The lie is so big, you know no different. And I didn't want to be that person. And I do that now. Failing all my promotion processes. I tell my daughter every time I've got one, you know, 
And I said, oh, yeah. And daddy's going to study and daddy. Oh, and then she was, uh, hold me accountable, you know. She go, daddy, don't you study today? And I go, yeah. And she go, can I practice question with you? Let's practice question. Yeah. And uh, she'll do the thing and I'll, uh, she, yeah. and she'll have some notes and she'll go, you didn't say this. Oh, yeah. I didn't yeah. say that. Yeah. Because I'm going to expect the same from her. Of course, exactly. This is great life lessons for Lily. Yeah. yeah. And then when I don't get it, and the first few times, she was very upset because mm. also she doesn't understand it. No, she just then. sees that someone's not giving to her daddy goes, something that he's worked hard for. She was balling with her. She's like, don't they like you, daddy? Why won't they let you join the team? Oh. Do, why don't, why you, why don't they like that you? That pulls at your heartstrings. Yeah, because that's it? relatable to her world. Yeah, of course. I've worked hard at playing football. I hope I get on the school yeah. football team. The school football team said no. Mm -hmm. And in her world, it might be because they don't like her. Because she can't understand anything. Is that, yeah, what other Well, you told me practice there? passing. I practice passing. I can pass the ball. Why can't I play? No. And for us in the adult world, we complexify and go, oh, and Sarah was also there and Sarah did better than me. Yeah. Sarah did better than me. And I say that to people. I'm like, people aren't against you. They're just for themselves. Yeah. And that doesn't mean they don't care. Sarah has her own life with her own goals and her own partner and her own world. And she wants to achieve the next level in whatever this thing is, for mm -hmm. fulfillment, for financial reasons, for whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah? It's not tennis. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I, you beat me. No, it's darts. It's firefighter challenge racing sometimes. We're both doing the same course on an individual run. You just went faster than me. Yeah. I made a few mistakes. You beat me. Okay? You, we, we, we try and trick it and position it like, oh, here comes Pete versus John. Not really, but really. Yeah, no, we said this, didn't we? It's more yeah. just, it's a good, it pushes you, it's good for the spectators and stuff. So it creates that competition, that challenge mm -hmm. element. But you said it to me the night before when we was chatting and I was feeling a bit nervous. Yeah. And you said, it literally, it is you and it's Chrissy. Yes. It's not you v Chrissy. No. However, it will be set up like that. You'll have that in your head, but it ultimately is, you do a thing, you do the run, she does the run, you both complete the thing. But you're doing it at the same time. Yes. Yeah. And this is the same promoter. So you'll spend more time. And sometimes with it helps. Me. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes it helps. If I know, oh, Pete, have you heard Sarah's going for that job as well? Ooh, I better be prepared. Yeah. Sarah's a smart cookie. To be. So that's useful. Are you going against Chrissy? Oh, that would be good because she'll push me. I'll push her. Yeah. And you both did. Yeah. But at the end of the day, your winning doesn't mean no right now doesn't mean no forever i didn't get the job now okay can you get over yourself and go again yes yeah, yeah. you're running the british soon okay you wanted to run faster in the welsh you still completed it mm -hmm. but that doesn't matter lots of people didn't lots of people would have loved to have been you at the welsh mm. and they weren't yeah yeah because they couldn't finish the course but who you are now you're the hero of your own story. You'd love to have been you 12 months ago. Yeah. So what you do, sir? Oh, well, I'm a watch manager. I'm a pink firefighter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to Saudi Arabia, did toughest firefighter life. Oh, no, I did pretty well, actually. Yeah, yeah. No, I completed the course. It was hard. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, then I went to the world. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah I, do, I do run the podcast as well. And it's like, Jesus Christ. But to you, you're like, oh, God, it's all a bit shit. <laughs> yeah, I really wish I was loads better than this. And you're like, uh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, but, but I know what you're saying you still have to be a coward. Let's zoom like, out yeah, yeah. a little bit and get perspective on where we are. Because same with the recruits. Oh, God, you know, I'm really struggling with training. But you got in the fire service. Yeah, exactly. You are here. After seven years of applying, yeah, you seven years ago would have snapped your arm off. You'd have been begging the person to go, hey, look, you're having a bad time. Do you want to swap? I'll swap with you. It's okay. You're really struggling in training. I'll swap. Yeah. Just swap the names and I'll come in your place. They'd have snapped your arm off because they're still working on a building site. Yeah. Mm. Did you drive past them last night at two in the morning on your fire engine with your champagne problems and go, oh, another call at 2 a.m. Do you want to get out and dig up the fucking road Yeah, and I'll jump for the next the five hours? Yeah. Oh, but he gets a 20 minute mate break in a minute and he can eat a cold sausage roll from the van. Yeah. And the cold coffee. Yeah. Oh no, sorry. It's going to take another five minutes for you to get back to your bed. Oh yeah, like where you'll be for the like next you say few hours. Problems, isn't it? We talk about Champagne this a lot. Problems. Mm. And I love that terminology. Let's zoom out a little bit. So, continuing the long answer. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> when I went through that journey, 
you have to do a lot of self-reflection. Mm-hmm. Um, I went through something NA, Narcotics Anonymous. A lot of people okay. don't know about it. I didn't know about that. There's Alcoholics Anonymous. There's Narcotics Anonymous. Okay. It's a national thing. You can attend meetings online. You can attend local meetings. It's a similar 12-step process yeah. with a sponsor because addiction is addiction. And you go through a big process, some quick, some small, and all last forever. Yes. I always say, that's why I always say I'm a recovering addict. And you go, well, what is it? Well, 12 years ago. But you never stop no. because addiction is a is a personality type. It's not, I've got a bad knee. Yes. That was 12 years ago. Oh, it still hurts a bit, but yeah, I'm pretty much fine now. Uh-huh. Addiction is something you always have. Yeah. You just cross addict. So addicts cross addict to work is an easy one. They go, I'm stopping smoking now. I'm just going to fucking work because I'm not yeah. going to smoke breaks no more. I just need to make loads of work and just work will be my thing. Yeah. yeah. Or fitness or whatever they cross addict to another thing because they are an addict okay so i'll stop you there just briefly so then what what's become your thing now just on what you've just said so my crutches yeah you came through that Mm -hmm. but like you just said there has to be something else Mm -hmm. for an addict my crutches are business and fitness okay and arguably within business now folds in that third love of the fire service Mm. Because I knew if I did any one thing, I'd kill it. Okay. I'd suffocate it. Like if I try to only do the fire service, which I did when I joined the on-call, I just pissed everybody off. Okay. Because you want to move really fast, not as in promoting, but you want to change everything. You want to change it now. You work all the overtime, you do all the thing. You do whole time during the day, on-call during the night, then take the overtime shifts as well. And if you are an addictive person, you you might either rise really quickly and everyone hate you or you won't rise really quickly and everyone hate you Mm -hmm. because you're just annoying you're creating 50 community safety events this month and we only needed to do six yeah yeah yeah. that was the first accident when i was originally a crew manager and given a community safety educator reference i've got scout groups from around the counties coming yeah yeah Yeah. every week yeah yeah and then we've got two road safety things this week and then we're going to three schools next week and then they go whoa 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 that ain't in the station budget. Yeah, but you said you wanted to improve community safety. Ambulance are going to be here in a minute. Yeah, for the 12 pump exercise I've organized. And you just piss everybody uh-huh. off. Okay. So I knew I couldn't do one thing. Yeah. So I ran a number of businesses at a cleaning company, uh, like a caravan renting travel slash company, at a uh, pizza company where we'd go to events and pop up pizzas. Uh, and I had two gyms as well. Okay. Um, and I used to run them all like simultaneously with, with business partners. And it would be a hard thing for the business, not a hard thing, but they wouldn't get it. Some, I was very transparent about my addictions, but if they got it, it was okay. But they still, it can be guilt, make them feel guilty. And you said this sometimes with us, Leo, like, oh, Pete, I, you're going to the thing. And then oh, you go to the thing like, I've got something on next week mm, or I've yeah. got to do this and I've got to do that. And I'm like, this isn't an aspirational thing. This is a crutch. Yeah. This is a coping mechanism. Yes. Yeah. Don't, don't think I need to work harder or better. Your life is perfect for you mm-hmm. and it works well. And there's bits of your life where I go, oh, Sarah's got loads of friends. You know, and oh, she just sent me a picture. She's out having pizza with her friends. Oh, that's great. I went for pizza with friends. Oh no, never. I did it when I had a pizza company and I would invite some friends to events. Yeah. But actually I wasn't socializing because I was running the business and I'd sort of go and sit down with them for a bit and then go and do something else. I don't do that. And that has a cost as well. Yeah. I have lots of, they would say friends. I said to you, and I say to you regularly, Mm. I've got a very small circle. And you go, what do you mean small circle? I'm like three, yeah? And you're one of them, yeah? Yeah. That's how small it is. Yeah. Maybe four. Mm-hmm. And the other two, I see, well, even one's a sponsor, not a podcast sponsor, an NA sponsor. So they help me with my addiction and they relate to it because they're a recovering addict. Yeah. And the other one I see every seven months. Yes. If annually. Yeah. Not a good idea, probably. Most people would hate it. 
So that doesn't work either. Um, but yeah, the podcast manifestation came from all of that internal look, understand your blueprint, understand your why. Being the addict, I went in down the rabbit hole of personal development. I went to all the Tony Robbins events. I went, listened to all the Jim Rohn books. I listened to Man's Search for Meaning. I listened to all of these great books. Yeah. yeah? Na um, neuro linguistic programming. I went and got trained in that. Okay. I trained myself as a coach. It's like coaching other people because it's a bit like you come back from fire behavior thing. Let me tell you all about fire behavior. I know, come back yeah. from High Rocks event. Hey, you want to come do High Rocks? Let me tell you about High Rocks. Yeah. yeah? Ugh, you're that guy. You're yes. the personal development guy. Have you high fived the mirror this morning? I have. <laughs> Yeah. Have you ice bath? Yeah. My best is better and my better is better. I know, yeah. Yeah. Look at the tattoos on my body. Yeah. These all came around that. It says do more on my left hand, be the difference on my right hand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah and they for all people have that, relevance for you. and uh, For me at a time in my life. Yeah. And, and I do look at some of them, half laugh, half cringe. Ah, well. Yeah. And go, ah, it's funny, isn't it? It's a conversation starter. It's definitely that. And that led me down lots of very deep conversations with people. Mm. Because you sit down with someone and most people want to puddle jump. They want to have shallow conversations with lots and lots of people. Huh. And this is why the art of communication is dying and why podcasting as a sector is exploding. Yes. Because people crave authentic, passionate conversation because they rarely experience it in their day-to-day -day life. Yeah. People are just having a, a series of skin deep comments well weather like sarah how's the workout yeah do much of the weekend okay let's crack on yeah well even to the point where now we go are you all right yeah good are you mm -hmm. it literally is a back and forth and i was listening to a podcast the other day actually funny enough around hours obviously um <laughs> <laughs> i do actually listen to it i do and um they said that where like you know when people don't get that mm -hmm. and are you all right and they're like oh well i had a really bad weekend the kids i couldn't sleep and then the person who was asked thinking, oh my God, they're actually answering this question because as a society, we do the whole, I, how are you? Yeah, good, are you? Win and literally, in. as you're passing, mm -hmm. and that has become a thing, mm -hmm. we don't really want to know. No. And you're like, wow, yeah. that's pretty shit. And we also play into that by, you, uh, how you doing, Pete? Crushing it. Winning. Kicking or ass, living taking my names. best life. Living my Can't best complain. Life. Can't complain. Yeah, to be fair, I'm living my best life right now. Yeah, and <laughs> that element there... If someone does do that, the second bit, most people would be like, what if they just start breaking down in tears? Yeah, you asked. And the, yeah, and you go, oh, yeah. uh, I'm actually heading to a meeting. Yeah, so you're right. Do you we, know what I mean? Yeah, we have a lot of, there's quite a few people who think I can't do small talk because they think it is just bullshit talk. It's bullshit. Or where people like you just said are like, how was the gym? And they're not genuinely interested. It's just a patter. Like, oh, how was the gym? Oh, did you sleep all right? I genuinely meant that one actually this morning, by the way. Well, we, we are intentional <laughs> about the questions yeah. we ask each other. But most people, if they sat with us, they'd be a bit like, oh, fucking hell. There's a lot going on, isn't there? <laughs> God, you know they I mean? talk a lot about them. Why are they talking about the meaning of the fucking universe again? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyone want another beer? Do you know what I mean? And that's why I struggle yeah. with socials. I'm very sociable but i'm not very social because i can be i can i could go and make friends with that fucking wall yeah you ask yeah, yeah. i You're like going to events where i know no one yeah. and i will go and sit down and make friends with people at the table i love that i love watching you do that yeah because i've i'll just sit with you and i'm like i only have to wait like literally minutes and we'll just be me and you at a table fire service college is a prime example because yeah. there's so many interesting people there yeah. from different walks of life and you'll spot someone or in when we're getting the food yeah. you'll go hey buddy how are you, you all right and you'll notice what he's wearing i love this and i just watch it because i love watching it unfold yeah. and it'll be the ambulance or some security firm or whatever and you'll be like oh right this this is and you will get into a conversation with them and then when we see oh come sit with us yeah and then you'll find so much out about them and you think, oh, you would not have known that. Yeah. And we're there and everyone's left and they're like, oh, Jesus, I've got to get to the thing. Yeah. And they're like, but can I take your number? And you're like, yeah. And then I'm like, there you go. And I love watching you. Strangers are friends that. you just don't know yet. Yeah. You know what I mean? Most people are interesting people. And this is with the podcast. Like you think your story's not interesting because you've lived it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Guys, it's sat in this very room. Fascinating bloke. The stuff, like we said earlier about the stuff he shares online with his missus, they should have a goddamn podcast. It would be massive because the conditioning they have had to receive uh -huh. 
from their development and their emotional intelligence yeah. because of the unpredictable situation of their son being alone with a severe mm-hmm. learning difficulty. They've developed so much yeah. authenticity and relatability for the millions of people who are also going through that. So yeah. your life feels a bit eh, yeah? But I also say to people, your mess is your message. Yeah, The like thing that, you yeah. think is like a clusterfuck one, Let's keep of that. a life yeah. is your message. Yeah. And you're petrified people will find out. But you know when they find out, they go, Sarah, I didn't know that about you. Yeah. Like we, mas- we miscarried twins before Lily was born. One in four. Mm. One in four pregnancies, supposedly, when I last checked the data, maybe wrong. And then you go, oh, hey, we and then around the room, people go, Yeah, right, like, oh, yeah. oh, we had a miscarriage. Yeah. Oh, we're like each other. Because a minute ago, you were just, Oh my God, Sarah, the watch manager, she's amazing. I bet she just pisses excellence and just <laughs> emanates rainbows. When she gets out of the car, the fucking sun comes out. Every day is utopia for Sarah. No, no, Sarah's got stuff, yeah? And she's constant professional, she shows up and she's great. But she's very relatable. And Dave complimented you about this last night. He did actually, yeah. Yeah, and it's a secret Bless superpower. It. Yeah. Because you've not consciously developed it. You've not gone, oh, I need to be a better listener so people like me more. No, you just become a better listener because you're interested in people. And that's why I wanted you to be involved in this mm. because you have that skill set. You didn't apply for this. It wasn't. A, I didn't put an advert on LinkedIn because I'd have got the wrong people. You know, it's by firefighters for firefighters mm. and finding people like you is the secret nuggets in the desert. You know, you wander around the forest of the fire service and go, oh my God, found a golden nugget. Yeah. And you know what? They're everywhere. Oh yeah. Exactly. They're everywhere. But only if people are willing to get over themselves and communicate. Mm. So again, they manifested from having those deep conversations and me going, I'm sure I'm not the only person who will find yeah. you fascinating. Yeah. And I say this to firefighters all the time. Every time, how many times you've sat, you've already recorded a hundred or you've already done a hundred podcasts. Yes. You just didn't record them. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You sat at a watch table and so-and-so told you the story. They did the thing. And you're like, wow, you're a fascinating person. Yeah. Very few people are ever going to hear that. I'll repeat it. Sarah, yeah. I'll go, oh, I met Sarah once. She was really interesting. And she said, every time you go to a fire, it's like a fire, but bigger. And I'll go, oh no, I fucked that up. What did she say? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You ruin it. And all of these stories get ruined. Mm-hmm. But if in yeah, 40 totally. years time, 40 years, we're not that young. In 80 years time, when we're dead, yeah? If you could go back now and listen to your great granddad, not just see the photo of him and the thing on the back. Yeah. And maybe someone wrote something about him once. But if you could hear him. Yeah. And go... Oh my God, he's so full of life. Yeah. He's so full of life. Listen to him. He's 30 when he recorded that. God, he's passionate. He's God, he's driving. He's going for it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I say this to people like, who was the first great manager you had? And they'll go, oh, her name was, um, we just called her Brommers, right? But her name was Sarah Bromley. And the way she led the team, like she had this thing, she was just such a good listener. But like she wasn't, she wasn't like massive, but she had a real presence to her. Mm. and she didn't seem to dominate the conversation but like she had good command presence everyone knew she was in charge and like when we were on the instant ground she just kind of knew stuff she never seemed flapped you know if they could if they could say oh it was cerebral actually she was on a podcast once go and listen to this thing yeah because she's dead now or she retired 10 years ago they'll never know you or they might oh yeah go and speak to her and they give you a ring and you you retired Sunday afternoon quick 20 minutes yeah oh yeah mm-hmm. what did you used to do I don't know really I just used to like care about people and uh, just kind of like manage people and uh, crap. Yeah, it's not as authentic crap. as it was at that time, yeah. And I wanted to capture them. Yes. And go, For hey, a lifetime, this yeah. person's fascinating. Yeah. Go and listen to them. It's not about me. It's not the Pete Wakefield yeah. show. Yeah. But that person's really, really interesting. Yeah. Go and listen to them. And that's why I put it together. Perfect. And it just kind of fumbled its way there. And look at it now. What are we now? 300 and... Yeah. You should know because I put the number. No, you shouldn't because. It's 309? No, no as an no. example, like the Welsh that went out recently. Oh, the bonus. The bonus. There's, yeah. there's probably 40 or 50 bonus episodes. Oh, so we're getting close to nearly probably. 350. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, probably slightly more. Which is great. Yeah, because all the WFS ones that went out, 
they're just WFS 2024. Yeah, it's not a little, number. Yeah, of just a little bonus. So that's where it's always like, I don't know where we're at. Nuggets. But it also doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. Because like the first time we hit 100,000 downloads, I was like, whoa, 100,000 downloads. I can't even remember that. How many people is that? I don't know. 100,000. Yeah, but what is that? Is that how yeah, many people are in that like, room? It's the stadium thing. Well, whatever. Wembley only holds 40,000, 80,000, whatever it is. I don't know. It's more than that. Well, yeah. All those people have listened. And then when you hit 500,000 yeah. and you go, wow. Yeah. It doesn't change. People think, oh, when, like, when did the podcast met? It's not, there's no thing. James, uh, um, PT James online, James Smith always mm. talks about this. He's like, when you hit a thousand followers, it's the same feeling as when you hit a million followers. Yeah. I was going to say, it's, it's still, we still do the same thing and we still carry on doing what we do. Yeah. But it's Nothing just, changes. Yeah. I was listening to the Daily Stoic as I was uh, driving a Ryan Holiday. Mm -hmm. Fantastic podcast. And he was talking about when he hit number one with his first book. Yeah. He says, I was out cutting the grass and my agent called me and said, dude, you've just gone number one bestseller. Congratulations. Yeah. And that's an amazing feeling. And he went, nobody said it wasn't. Oh. He just went, oh, okay. And then his missus was like, oh, lunch yeah. really ready. Yeah, I was going like, to say, food's ready, see ya. I need to finish cutting the grass. So he went out and cut yeah. the grass. And he's like, nothing changed. No. It no, changed for you. Thing, yeah. Yeah, it didn't change for the person. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I had a conversation with someone at the Women in the Fire Service who's got a lot of followers. And they were like, oh, when I hit 100,000 followers. And I was like, mm, what would that mean to you then? What would it mean to you versus when you hit 10,000? And they were like, wow, it's, it'll be, phew, I'll have made it. No, you won't. It'll mean nothing. Uh. It'll mean something, then nothing. I used to think it was when I was getting doing strong man, I was like, I I'm strong, but I need to be like eighteen stone. Mm. Hit eighteen stone, hit two hundred kilo deadlift, whatever. Now I need to be twenty stone. Hit three hundred kilo deadlift. I need to be twenty four stone. You're always gonna want more, right? Hit three It's a healthy the, you'll never get there. There is no completing it. Success is a verb. It's a passing word. You know what I mean? It's not It's not a noun. Oh, success arrived. Whee! Yeah. You've got to keep pursuing it. You've yeah. got to keep working through it. It's the, old, it's the journey, not the destination. Yeah. You love the journey. Well, yeah, you do. And then when you get the thing and you we read and we've read books and talked about things and listened to podcasts and things about where great athletes and thing, the, the Olympics or the CrossFit Games, Astronauts. they train and train and train for this thing. They do that thing, the amazing thing, and then the weeks following it, they're kind of like, I don't know what to do with myself. Yeah. Oh my God, what do I do with this? The crash. Yeah. Because astronauts is a typical one. Yeah. Suicides in astronauts and things like that. Not suicides, but like post-Olympic depression. Mm. This was a four-year journey to get to the Olympics and I've done it. Now what? Yeah, and that's what? Like four years of pure dedication and and then for 10 seconds on a, like, on a 100 oh, meter track two days after now like oh, what do i do myself so yeah yeah ryan holiday says it every great writer before you finish your book and jk rowling says it you need to already be writing the next yes, book yes yeah yeah because you've got to flow straight into that next thing <laughs> yeah rather so than the the podcast is a through. thing is we've been doing a thing for a while no one knew about it some people know about it more people know about it some people love it some people hate it some people hate you some people love you who cares just keep doing it yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll be, I've been waffling that long the batteries are dying it's because there's never a short answer but that's not a bad thing but that's the thing of the podcast as well I'm like and I have it after each recording I says promise you when you listen back to this you'll go oh we didn't talk about that and I'll go yeah it's fine yeah, which is cool. It was a conversation of a snapshot in time. And we could talk about this for ages, but in true Pete file, I'm super respectful of your time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but uh, Sarah, I'll, you're a great podcaster. Yeah, thank you. I'm getting better because of you. Again, we make each other better, which is perfect. Yeah. But hopefully this has given the listeners a bit more of an insight into Peter Wakefield, the guy, for me, the guy who has brought this amazing podcast to us all. Mm -hmm. I know you don't like that, but... Yeah, you have done brilliantly. It is great. And I'm super lucky and feel like real proud to be a part of it. But thank you for doing this with me today. And I'll compliment you because podcasting's a trick. It sounds like there's one person. There's you, there's Carl, there's been people, James Rich, across the journey of it. It's not one person doing a thing. 
you do so much for this behind the scenes and new people joining the team doing a lot as well. I'm just the idiot that talks for long enough and looks <laughs> stupid enough. But it wouldn't be where it is without you. So thank you for your time saying thank you. Thank you. Love you, bye. Love you, bye. <laughs> <laughs> the Firefighters podcast was created to recognize, acknowledge, inspire, and hopefully even motivate these incredible individuals who have chosen to be part of the first responder community. Our driving purpose is to create a legacy resource for the current and future generations of firefighters and first responders. We get some incredible feedback from listeners and guests. And as the podcast grows, our desire to create longevity and sustainability means that we are asking for the support of our listeners. If you want to support the podcast, if you want to get discounts to our merchandise, hoodies, clothing, coins, patches, tallies, and also access to all of the incredible documents that get shared with us from our podcast guests and sector leaders, then please head over to our Patreon page. And for just £3 a month, you can support the future of the podcast. Please finally hit that follow, subscribe, or rate button on the platform you're listening. And wherever you're around the world, please support your emergency services responders. And thank you for listening.